All right, well, that's enough introductions. Let's go. Let's just get our daily buffs. Oh, I think I already got it, but oh well. <laughs> Slime! Thank god you're finally awake. Am I? If you say so, what's eating you? I'm at my wit's end! Charles Wallace has gone missing! Really? Where'd he go? He wouldn't be missing if I knew that. She closes her eyes and takes a deep breath. Okay, okay, I'm panicking. Come on, Jessica. Don't panic. I do know where he went before he went missing. What happened? We were having trouble getting the Detectotron to focus on the next artifact. All we could get was the Big Moist. The Big Moist? It's a swamp north of Port Cam, and I'm pretty sure that the entire swamp is not the cursed artifact in question. Charles went there out there yesterday afternoon to see if a down power line or something was causing interference. Huh. And he hasn't come back yet? No! No, he hasn't! Maybe I should go looking for him. Are you trying to drive me crazy? Come on, get a wiggle on for crying out loud. Charles would have been eaten by Gatormen by- Gatormen? You got an item. Map of the Big Mo- This sponge, you are assured, will act as an effective map of the moist lands. Location unlocked. The Big Moist bus stop. Is this map a piece of slice of Swiss cheese? It's a sponge. Which deli have you been going to? A sponge is definitely not a map. You're going to a swamp. It's soft, damn, and it has holes in it. What else do you want from me? All right, okay. Did you say something, you say something about Gatormen? Gatormen, you know. I don't, which seems like a good thing. The Big Moist is home to a tribe of nasty and belligerent half-people, half-alligators. They don't take kindly to intruders, such as, for example, Charles Wallace. Or me, presumably. Are you chickening out on me now when a friend's life is possibly at stake? Ever hear, uh... From the look of Jessica's face, this does not seem like the best time for this quip. You want to continue to... You want to continue to have a face to make quips out of. I'm going, I'm going. To do, search for Big Moist for any signs of Charles Wallace. Ooh. You just... You check the message pad next to the phone. There's a message from Rufus at SIT. Call Rufus back. You dial the number. Uh, the number you dialed is not in service. Please hang up at Rufus. Oh, it's you, Slime. Sorry about the subterfuge. I had to tap into the university line to get a phone down here, and that isn't strictly speaking legal. Anyway, I think I figured out the next step in building in my quantum telecommunications if I can get to my lab as soon as possible. Okay, see you soon. What's that? Yeah, the fishing rod curse. Which I getting to try doing talking to all of these ones, but didn't really do anything. Just sent us back out. I wonder if something over here that we missed. Ooh, a bike. This is like <sighs> Break the cycle. Why? <sighs> I'm glad I did this, but I'm still sighing at this joke. Break it. When the curse got its teeth in that bicycle, it screamed, but only for a moment, and then silence. Limp silence. The insatiable eldritch hunger for fish that once animated the curse is gone. You gain 15 XP. The fishing rod remains left behind. Just a stick and a hook. Too weak to catch anything that lives. Can't even fish with it now. Aww, that's unfortunate. Stripped of all eldritch magic and mystic, the one's cursed fishing rod is now perfectly banal. Actually, it looks pretty lousy, which doesn't matter much because the line was dismissed along with the curse. That's what I needed it to do. It's better for the environment this way. If you think this is bad, wait until you find out about gasoline. This is so unfair.
Yeah, still not good enough to beat Jessica at chess. It's two, guys, two of the frat guys you helped out earlier. The guy who was looking for mesky chips and the guy who lost his jacket. Oh, heck yeah, bro. If you got problems beating the cold Q and is the, oh, is the hobby for you. Wait, did, you just, did I say hobby? I meant lifestyle. Standing next to a warm, comforting fire does sound p pretty good. Right, bro? Plus, while you're standing there, you can be queuing up some burrs or weenies or whatever. It's win-win. Gosh. You're basking in a warm glow of your conversation. You gain 35 XP. Hey, Fancy Dan. Give me my usual. Absinthe. With cola. And an olive drop. Mmm. I wonder if these stores have anything new. Ooh, Cola Wars helmet. Cola Wars metal. I don't think I'm gonna use anything right now. Parmesan missile. Alright, I'll take it. Trench pants. What hats do you got for me? Old cowboy hat. Ooh, jewel turban. That's better than my mushroom hat. Gives me a mysticality and muscle. Nice. Welcome back. Sorry, again, I don't have crayons color. Ooh, I have, do have a pencil. Oh, yes. You should take the pencil and page for it. I know it might seem silly to you, but I have all, such a fond memories of going down chemical store as a child. I sit and draw pictures for hours. Can I draw something with a pencil? Hmm, but you're my pencil supplier. Wouldn't that be a conflict of interest? <laughs> Ooh, advanced pants. Shopkeeper gives you a friendly smile. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Slime. Hi, Nancy. If you're in a market for pants, you come to the right place. A market for pants. Haha, <laughs> nice. Got athletic shorts, black leather skirt, black leather pants. Not that that's gonna show up. Mm, no mysticality pants, unfortunately. Oh yeah, speaking of which. Sorry from the dark guy. Hmm. Wait, this that article shouldn't exist. We solved the curse of the solved the past of the sandwich museum. Ooh, we can also unlock this. Unlock Twilax. It takes everything you got, but finally the sturdy keyhole of Phylax falls to you in its contest of raw strength. The cast iron head gives you a nod, respect between gladiators. Unlock Sneaky Pete. Sneaky Pete's a tricky customer, but you never met a Pete you couldn't out sneak. If turning the key in the lock does nothing, then what happens if you put it in and just leave it? Ah, uh, yes, exactly. The lock clicks open. Good old Sneaky Pete. Unlock Methapon. Labyrinth of Methapon is not so difficult, really, once you spend some time with it. You visualize its rooms and corridors, making a mental map of which paths bring you to dead ends and which is success. The key turns decisively in the log, and the cast iron head of Methapon gives you a little wink. All three heads are now unlocked. Open the door. The Cura Burris building and loan. 
Stanchion stands so still. This Stanchion stands stolidly still, staying stoically stationary. This miraculous lamp has burned for twenty years and counting, keeping a single solitary vigil to the dying of the bank. Turned off. Good night. This plaque has gone green with age. July 4th, 1899. Today we celebrate our opening of the Security Bear Secure Burris Building and Loan. Plunkett Street at Ocean City. 89. 1899. I'm gonna have to look that at the Ocean City later. Integrity, security, excellence, a corporate value for each head of the dog. Aha! You always said your eyes were of equal quality or better, and here's a proof. A tiny button underneath the register, some sort of secret alarm? Press button. Ah. That's un unfortunate. Standing by the cash register, you kind of says about what it would be like to have a service job instead of whatever it is you do. I work at a gas station and a restaurant. Oh, that's right. Open the cash register. The drawer is sealed shut, and there's no obvious way to open it. There's nothing you can do with the cash register at all, in fact, other than bang on the numerical key to the toddler might. Force the drawer open. Meat lines the drawer in the uniform piles. No wonder the banks are clashing if this is all they got on the till. Kick the vault door. Ow. Punch the door. Shoot the door. Tie the vault to a car and drive down the street. That did not go as planned. <laughs> Who knows? Oops. Oh, what was it? 1899. There it is. July 4th. You find something interesting. Today saw the grand opening of a new banking concern. Securiburus Building. Securiburus Building in Lone. I'm never going to get that name right. Residents of Ocean City watched in appalled disgust as, during the opening ceremony, the maximum security vault door was installed backwards, sealing inside their savings and valuables for eternity. Bank's chairman reassured worried customers the mistake would not affect operations. What happened next? Ten minutes later, the bank was closed permanently. Blech. Watts. Ten minutes later, the bank was closed permanently. This doesn't affect my confidence in banks, or banks can't trust them. There's literally nothing I can do here. Unfortunate. Maybe in the future. Oops, no. There's anything you wander around. We got the proceeds from the last shipment of found parts we sold. After overhead taxes and all, this is your cut. You pay taxes? I mean, we we pay taxes? Gotta keep up appearances. Don't want the feds breathing down our necks, right? Oh yeah, that sounds pretty gross. Let's go to boardwalk to get some extra money. Yeah, 38. Actually, how's our stats right now? 6, 7, and 10. We need 15 for that vampire steamer. How hard's the puzzle? It's a Thursday puzzle, so it's tough, but not unmanageable. Spend 10 meat. You put a pencil between your teeth and pick up the mallet in one hand and the air rifle in the other. Hmm. How? Slam! Ding! Solve! 
Wow, phew, I need to close with the question marks after them. Ah, oh, but those are the fun ones. Great job, kid. You're a winner. Here's your prize. Ooh, colorful cloud pants. There exist certain objects that you'll only ever find on a clown, and these white pants with colorful polka dots are a pair of them. Hooray! Alright, I need plus one muscle for that. Hey, look who it is! Ready for the level 3 challenge, Chief? All you have to do is knock over this stack of lead milk bottles of beanbag while walking on the tightrope and playing me a chess. Do I have to win? Well, yes. Are you good at chess? Hi, give me a second at the state championships this year. Ready to take me on? Hmm. Okay, you spend 10 meat. You climb up across the tightrope, carefully inch your way across the calling while your chest moves. Fortunately, the height gives you a good view of the board. As you reach the end, you hurl the beanbag with full force at a stack of milk bottles. Knight to EE7! Clatter! Checkmate! Well, I'll be damned. I made a kid, you snickered me pretty good. Here's your prize. You got a sticky hand on a stick. This is a carved wooden hand on a short chain. The hand is covered in tar. Perhaps someday someone will come up with a slightly less terrible way to execute on this idea. Uh... Nine to all stats. Ugh. Not today, no. Ooh. Looking for help. Hmm, interesting, but no, nothing I can afford right now. Where do we go now? Let's go back to Crystal Dream Lake for a second. Let's wander a bit. Oh, actually, let's check the pet store, see if they have any more pets. You meet yourself on the road again. Oh, not again. Good thing I'm not the Buddha. They give you a worn out look. Not quite a thousand yard stare, more like 500? Not really in the mood for jokes right now, to be honest. Take this damn thing. They hold out a ring. Ah, jeez. Look, you know how this works by now. I took it, so you have to take it too. But I'm the earlier you. If I don't take it, then you won't have taken it either. But I already did. Well, from your perspective, yes. That's the one that matters to me, and when you're me, you'll agree. Take it. Fine, fine. You got an item, Mobius ring. This ring is only one side, so technically there's no difference between wearing it and not wearing it. What is it? Pain in the ass. You want my advice? Don't use it. Why not? Because you'll find out. Find out what? Why you shouldn't have used it? Ask Chester at Delphine Farm. He'll explain. Except not really. You turn and leave before you can ask any more questions. Guess I get up on the wrong side of bed that morning. Alright. Moxie Boon. Well, I guess let's put on this Mobius ring. Where is the Delphine farm? Good question. Is it an ocean city? No. No. Oh, right, I need to go to Rufus Lab. It's Rufus. Hello again. What's the next step? I don't have to go back in the sewers, do I? Oh no, this will be much more straightforward. Well, part of it will be anyway. That's what I like to hear. I need some way to broadcast a quantum signal from this Fishman Pearl over as broad an area as possible, and I figured the most robust transmission network is available at the commercial radio band. The nearest broadcast tower is the Radio Shack at WGCR, in the Big Moist. Okay, what do I do there? 
Just take this transmitter I built and plug it into the console. You got an item Rufus transmitter. I don't really understand what this machine does, but Rufus asked you to hook it up to a different machine that you also don't know what it does. That will transmit a special frequency over the radio, and I just need a bunch of different test readings so I can adjust the signal for latency, data loss, and so forth. Uh, uh, all you have to do is find as many random radios as you can, tune into the WGCR, and use this re receiver to test the transmissions. At least 10 different radios should be enough. Let's call it 11 just in case. You're not sure what this receives, but whatever it is, it's important to Rufus. Huh. Well, there's none in here. I think there was one back during... Like in the antique shop. Right? Well... Nope. Do I have one? No, I don't. Why would I have a radio? I am now being helped by myself. That's weird. Perfect. Ooh, they got the bunk beds now. Warm hands. It's that girl you met at the frat house earlier. Hello again. Nice hat. Hi. Thanks for helping me. So Thanks so much for helping me. You for didn't even get your name. I'm Calendula Crabtree. Oh, I'm Slime Green. I'm afraid I can't pay you back yet. We really don't have anything to make decent booze out of. At the moment, I'm just using random kitchen scraps and weeds, and I can't serve you that in good conscience. Or good ethics. Ah, oh, don't worry about it. You know the guy named Greasy Steve? Sure, that's my brother. We don't really get along, though. What's that guy up to? Working for the mob? Figures. Wait, your parents, your parents named you both Steve? No, they call me Creamy, and him Greasy. Hmm. It's Obed Lobdell, the shopkeeper from SIT. You know, the bad guy. Oh, hey, my messenger friend. Never caught your name. Hey, Obed. I'm Slime. Thanks for pointing me here. Business is booming. What you selling? Baseball. Finder clip. Delicious oyster. SID portable radio. Oh, maybe I had to tune to the radio after I put the thing there. That's, that makes sense. Can we found some first aid supplies? Yay! It's Walter, the fisher hobo you made under the SIT bridge. Hey, Walter. Oh, uh, hey. Thanks for telling me about this place. This is a fun little community. Nice. Glad you're settling in. Yep, accustomed to the solitary life of a fisherman, but it's nice to have some folks to come home at the end of the day. And everybody's co nobody's complained about the smell. Oh, good. Hello, Johnny. What can I do for you, slime? What are the secret plans? I admit, you've been quite helpful. You, at first a total stranger, have gone a bit away to help hobos when the other people of this country, and even the government itself, would not. This is the crux of the problem, that hobos are looked down upon, and when not overlooked entirely. I seek to remedy this. Well, are you planning a revolution? No, no, nothing so violent. I intend to sidestep the problem. Should not say more. Nothing different yet. Uh, over 
over here. Let's go to Big Moist. Chapter 4. Swamped. Swamp bus stop. It's a notice board. They're supposed to be from a local tourist bureau advertising something called a mud hench. Apparently it's the biggest hench in the country. Might be worth a look. This poster grabs your attention. Missing. Tom Chapman. Inquire at Largemouth Bass and Sons. Bass? Bass. The face of a teenage boy circled an attached photograph. The fo portrait of the boy and his elder male relatives, each holding a largemouth bass, proportionate to its own height. Hmm. There's a similar poster right underneath it. Missing. Kathy Tracy. Inquire at Largemouth Bass and Sons. What is going on at Largemouth Bass and Sons? Make a missing poster for Charles. Why well, you don't have a pin with which to attach a poster to the notice board? You can write Charles' name on the missing posters that are already there. Uh, actually, maybe don't do anything. You want to wander aimlessly through a fetid swamp? You know it. You slog through the swamp. Your slog through the swamp is interrupted by an unfortunate, unfortunately familiar face. There you are, dearie. How nice to see you again, although I would have wished for a more festive setting. But I'm afraid I just can't wait for the winter snow. Ah, geez, not you again. Me again! Dark Noel at your service. You'll be doing me a service by leaving me alone. Nah, nah, don't be such a Grinch. I have presents for you. What's a Grinch? Wait, did you say presents? That's right. Painful retribution and Yuletide curses. It was very clever of you hiding in the Institute, all warm and cozy behind the Dean's Wars where I couldn't get to you. But now that you're near the source of our power, it's time for me to deck your halls if you get my meaning. I'm just looking for my uncle. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know anything about the Dean or your plans or those weird dreams or any of it. She lays a finger on the side of her nose and her eyes start to glow red and green. Swell. Should definitely get rid of all these homunculi. Good. I guess the Mobius thing is really helpful and giving me an extra me. Only with one. Only has uh, one AP though, so. I can do at least that. Let's see, what can you do, Simone? You can set Dark Noel on fire, or last two random foes electricity, dealing six physical damage. Take that, Dark Noel. You won! Noel struck scuttles away with a You haven't seen the last of me or some such cliche. Let's go to the radio shack. All of a sudden you hear Gator Man screaming wildly to your left. Ah, and then just as suddenly another Gator Man starts screaming to your right. What the you hear an angry snarl behind you and turn around. Another Gator Man! Oh no! Oh yes! And then you hear someone say, Ugh! Behind you! So you turn around again. There's another Gator Man! You're surrounded! Well, crap. Stand very still and hope they leave. They do not leave. Well, they do eventually, but not before beating the crap out of you. Aww. Somebody's old campsite. It looks trashed. Investigate. Miss all the garbage strewn about you, find a shiny 7x8... 7 8 inch of combination wrench with a CW painted on the side. You can item. Charles Wrench. Ooh. That's strange. Obviously, this belongs to Charles, but he doesn't seem like the guy who'd lose one of his tools carelessly, nor the kind of guy who'd leave his trash around his campsite. You look around us more carefully and discover weird tracks in the mud. Big, clawed, bipedal tracks. Maybe Gatorman tracks? 
There's a spot where some kind of scuffle clearly happened. Ah, jeez, well that tears it. Charles Wallace must have gotten kidnapped by Gator Men. Maybe he dropped a wrench on purpose to attract your attention. Hopefully you find him soon. Red fern. That usually means there's a lot of dog blood, dog blood in it. Extract the blood from tiny fern leaves. These bricks have been inexpertly mortared together. I could pull them apart. Ah, those bricks were there to cover up the fact that this brick was missing. Lamest conspiracy ever. door appears to be unlocked. There are a couple of pieces of tape stuck to the, one of the bricks here. Ooh, the tape. Two holes you open in the walls are laying the swamp water in. Also, add again. You might expect them to cancel each other out, but I guess not. Fluid dynamics are a mystery to me. There's some guys hanging out here looking still looking cool, and also a gator man with more than the usual allotment of teeth. Push them. Hi, right, who are you guys? We are radio technicians. Why are you standing here in the dark? Why not? It is radio. There is nothing to see. Well, you got me there. About this water. What about it? I just wanted to point out that it isn't stagnant. It's flowing from one side of the room to the other. Ah, running water. One of our several very common weaknesses. Water burning, are you really terrible? The vampires make for a door, but get in each other's way and dissolve into ash that is quickly washed away. There were vampires? Huh. There's nothing on the table. I guess it just looks cooler to stand on the table than are just arbitrarily around the room. You guys are sharing one bed? Wait, why is there a coffin? Wow, this thing is pretty cool. Also looks very lightweight. Grab it. You pick, carefully pocket the zappy or thingamajig. Can you believe this is a thing that was invented in the past and not approximately 60 years from now? There's a to-do list here with a single entry. Guard the radio equipment. You erase the check mark. Nice dance keeps this lonely vigil. Dig through it. Hey, whoever used to work here left their jewelry behind. Small jewelry box, which will come in handy if you need to move some jewelry from place to place and you don't want to wear it on the trip. Open. You dump out the jewelry box's contents, which are so exciting you forgot to keep the box itself. We got Hamethyst earrings and Ring of Repulsion. Shiny. It isn't important to look good if you're on a radio, so this thing has a first aid kit instead of a mirror. Ooh. I can wash my face. A toilet, thankfully devoid of any broadcast features. Flush it. Hooray! You gain 55 XP. And with that, we could take another perk. Right, we could take this Fingers of Font now. And we could also take the Swiss Cutting. Apparently this machine is powered by evil, or at least weird. I don't know any of what this console does, but if there's any console consoli consolation, nobody really expects you to. Look up Rufus Gadget. You plug in Rufus Gadget, and the console starts emitting a different series of beeps that was it, than it was emitting before. Ah, bright. Okay. Maybe now we can start getting the radios. What else is there?
Any radios in here? Oh, what's this? There's a water in his bed roll. Well, he must also use it as a bath. One cigarette. Bad for you, but not as bad as a whole pack. Ooh. New cat unlocked. Ooh, we could get another mysticality. Yes. Just gonna have to go back to everything, every place we've been to. Hang on a second, if I'm gonna go adventure mode, I need to pick up a few things. She returns a few minutes later with a rectangle of white plastic poking out of her shirt pocket. Got a pocket protector? Yep, got a holster on my slide rule too. You're gonna have a word for what you are in about 30 years, that's gonna be nerd. 30 years after that, we're gonna be ruling the world, so watch your step, buddy. Haha. <laughs> Nothing here. What about this regular house? Nope, just a regular house. That doesn't have any radio. Huh. This wasn't here before. Oh, this is spooky. Throbbing ring of negative energy around the pair of dark shorts. Close it. With great effort, you managed to drag one side of the rift to the other with the pliers and wrench the whole thing closed. Or ply it closed, I guess. Hmm. I guess it's wherever there's some weird shadowy thing that happens, there's a rift that we need to fix. Good thing we backtracked. Anything over here? that uh, shadow ring just to avoid encounters like this. Might you have a match on your person? Nope. Ooh, 
Shadow Rifts. Oh, we've been here before. Nothing in the butterfly zoo. Science exhibit. All right. There's an old newspaper vending machine next to the dumpster. Oh yeah, that's kind of out of the way, but it doesn't get many sales. I suspect someone threw it away? Well, no wonder if sales are bad. Smell takes a couple of bobby pins out of her hair and bends them into a complicated shape and jiggles them in the machine's lock until it pops open. Can't have been that bad. There's a fair amount of meat in here still. Here, you can have half. Thanks. them. Oof. Any shadow portals? There's a shadow portal. Close it. factory. Anything over here? Nope, just chemicals. Ice cube. Why not? Not the most ridiculous thing you'll do for this week. You might think that a block of ice as tall as you would be difficult to carry around, and you'd be right. And I already have this. The moment I get out, it's gonna melt. Hmm. Well, where would I use a giant ice cube? Here, what about Miss Brewsters? Ooh, chuck mail and paper clip. Shadow player.
Uh, you know what? Sure, I can take this 5 XP from Gathering. Maybe it'll get us more XP total. All right, there we go. I don't think there's any radios in a church. Speaking of help, Father, I got some vampires to deal with, and I was wondering if you could spare some holy water? Certainly, our font is right over there. Please help yourself. Well, the thing is, I need a whole lot of it. Enough to fill an industrial boiler. It's like about 100 gallons. My goodness me! Well, if you can provide the water, I can bless it for you. We can also do ice if that's more convenient. I believe we would work out about 15 cubic feet. I just so happen to have a block of ice. A 15 cubic feet in volume right on me right now, Father. You said the block of ice down with a thud. Why, so you do? All right, I'd be happy to bless this for you. He mumbles under his breath and makes some religious gestures at a huge block of ice. There you go. As holy a block of ice as I have ever seen. Thanks, Father. Well, uh, I guess that's an easier way to do this other than getting, uh, 15 mysticality. What's down here? Close it. Ooh, a fishman have set up a casino. Fun. Wink. Much for a while. This game can seem to consist of throwing a handful of pebbles and rusty nails on the table. It's both very simple and very vague. Later next, you put some fish man eggs on the table. The group, the croupier picks up the pebbles and nails and hands them to the player, who shakes them up and scatters them across the table. The croupier seems impressed. He nods at the player, who keeps picks up one of the nails and tosses it again. The croupier adds a large pile of eggs to the player's bed, and the player grabs them with a burbling cry, cry of joy and greed. You continue to watch the action, hoping to glean some understanding. The gambler says some eggs down and looks at the dealer. The dealer hands in, in the pebbles and nails to the player, who kisses him and sends him flying onto the table. The group here appears at the nails and pebbles and nods. The player stings for a moment, picks up a nail, and tosses it onto the table again. When it comes to a soft, the group here shrugs and makes a small gesture. The player makes a glove noise and takes his eggs back. I'm, I have no idea what's going on here. I feel like this is just nonsense. But I'll place a bet once. Hmm. Yeah, I don't understand it. Oh, wait. This narrow pie leads to a different part of the sewers. Yell into it. Thankfully, nobody answers. Well, uh, I guess that's one way to... Back to the steam tunnels, I guess. Advanced projectile physics. Grants a ranged damage perk. Mm. Nah. Ooh, radio. I'm just gonna check if any other places have radios.
Oh, there's a radio. Don't know why there's a radio in this fishman sauna. sense that these are actually the clean dishes. This pot is catching all the grease that drips down through the ceiling. You got too much nasty goo already. Don't need to fish up more. Well. Locks a tin bucket full of raw, chopped up fish parts onto the counter, and garnish it with lemon wedge. Then he makes an expansive gesture at it like a used car salesman and waggles all ten of his fingers at you. Buy it. Takes your meat excitedly, pushes the bucket towards you, along with a bent tin fork and a hardly used paper napkin. You're pretty sure you see one of the fish chests switch as you pick up the bucket. You got a bucket of chum. This bucket contains a feast fit for a king. As long as the king of some kind of disgusting fish kingdom and his throne is a gross toilet. Ugh. He roots behind his counter for something else to sell you. He holds up the fishing spear with a hole still wiggling. Fish impaled on it. From his gestures and excited babbling, it seems like you get to keep the spear as the main selling point here. He asks how much he flashes out stretched fingers at you twice. Oh, fishman throwing spear. What else you got? Glass bottle filled with some kind of oil. Freshly squeaked. Fish liver oil? Hmm. Bucket of chum on the counter, holds up third hand, 10 to first time, card says market price, okay. Given this cat's condition, it can only be named Stinky. Ah, oh, I'm gonna need stench armor. What do I have? I have three stench armor. Get me a gas mask. Pet him. Gave sleaze armor. Hmm. Ah, here we go. Consider the boiler. Hmm, if you could replace the water in the boiler with holy water, that would put enough crimp in their fun. You'd only need about 100 gallons of it. Where are I going to get 100 gallons of holy water? Don't ask me, I'm just suggesting things. I mean, aren't vampires also allergic to running water, even if it isn't holy? The steam count is running water? Toss the holy iceberg into the boiler. You heat the giant ice cube into the boiler, and the steam immediately becomes sort of... nicer, whiter, and just a little bit sparkly, like a cloud that an angel would sit on while playing a harp. Well, that's probably just your imagination. What isn't, though, is the vampire screaming and melting into acrid puddles of goo. Phew. And we went full circle. Back to fish and chips. Bunch of goobies. I can tear its head off with a wooden statue with a metal diving helmet for a head. Nine muscle, huh? Can I get that much? Filter for muscle. Got the sports shorts. 
And a amethyst choker. Yes, that's just enough. Parrot's hat off. Hey, this is actually a real diving helmet. Good instincts. Let you breathe underwater, presumably. This old diving helmet still has enough air in it to last you as long as you'll remain interested in diving. Hmm. Well, I'll consider this later. Greasy tea greets, greets you with a relief grin. Heard, I honestly didn't expect to see you again. You got a real talent. Ah, it was nothing. Nah, don't sell yourself short. You got a real future in the organization. You got a briefcase full of meat. That's probably the last job you became from me. You dealt a fatal blow to the bloodsuckers in this territory, so if the boss does any more work for you, it'll be somewhere else. Good luck, kid. Thanks, Steve. See you around. I guess we go back to Ocean City to pick up any additional jobs. Wink. You dialed the number. Tak, Sucham, Chao, Giga, Bueno, Mochi Mochi, Toblerone, Guten Tag, Salunga, Met, Donald. Hello, Hala, Damoli. Stick to English or I quit. Your resistance to international forms of communicating may prove a hat have a hindrancing effect on you in the future. Our organization possesses ambitions of operating worldwide wise. I'll jump off that bridge when I get to it. What do you need? An incomplex requisition. A team of our operators transporting a shipment of alcohol through the local wetlands encounters difficulties and were compelled to abandon their submarine. Submarine. The wetlands proved to be drier than we had anticipated. Aha, uh -huh. so you need me to recover the booze. Where do you want me to take it? You may retain the booze as your recompense. Our only requ requiration is that not a not be acquired by prohibition agents for fear that it may discover our fingerprints upon it. Oh yeah, glass bottles do take fingerprints pretty readily. The bottles as well, yes, that is an excellent point. He gives you direction to the wrecked submarine. Location unlocked. Mops, mob submarine. Huh, well, I'm on my way. First, let's check if there's any other radios. Gift shops, gift shops sell anything in interesting? It does not, unfortunately. Over the shop. Oh, 
While exploring the halls of SIT, take a wrong turn and find yourself in a locker room full of goblins. As best as you can figure out from context, this must be SIT's varsity snapping towels at butts team. Except the sport probably has a better name than that. Towel butt? Butt snap? Hey, what's your sport called? Foot base! That doesn't make any sense at all. What are you, a nerd of some other kind? The goblins twist their towels up in lethal looking whips. Fight them. Baseball cap. Nothing here. We're off the bridge. to do here. Nothing in the bridge. Banish the shadowy phone booth. Oh yeah, is there anything in the courtyard? Complicated SIT textbook. Sure, I'll take it. I have no idea what this me what this is. Maybe it's just one that I sell at a profit. Yep. this one. Oh yeah, this was the weird triangle place. Here, what about the one next door? There's nothing here either. Oh, we can just go to the next one over. Hmm. Anything left over in the robot lab?
Nope, doesn't look like it. There's excessively nothing else to do except just go to go do things. All right. To the big moist we go then. You have a lot of uh you have a lot of XP though. You could probably spend it on some skills. Go to Mob Submarine. Quack. Sundering honk rattles the trees. Birds flee. Fish hide. You don't know what creature gave this honk, but you know it rules the swamp through fear. Might be a goose. Ooh, Hoboglyph. Some Hobogo painted on the tail fin. Disappointing lack of sandwiches inside. Ah well, forewarned is forearmed, I guess. This is a porthole. You can just barely make out a chart on the wall of the submarine. Look closer. You strain your eyes, but a chart is either slightly too far away and the, the submarine is slightly too dark, or some combination of those two factors. Strain your eyes. Years of study have taught you to how to deliberately damage your eyes in order to learn things. Those years of study finally pay off as the text on the chart reveals itself. Torpedo 2 pressure, 19 PSI. Go 19 PSI, classic pressure value. There's a porthole you can see the darkness inside a submarine. In a way, the submarine reflects the darkness inside all of us. This hatch leads down to the submarine. Open and climb in. It's a periscope, which is a device for looking at a guy named Perry. No Perry's in the horizon today, Captain. This hatch is going to enable torpedo, including a period. Back how the submarine is blocked by an imper impenetrable tangle of roots. Pipe is clogged. Unclog it. There you go. Russian clogs. Dancing Russian plumber's favorite and least favorite thing. <laughs> ah, hilarious. Washer meat contains a very nasty hat. Nothing more aggressive than a sailor who's angry that the hat is all gross. The wheel and the hatch is stuck fast. No amount of grunting or straining will make it go round and round. The control label has a big dial on it labeled internal pressure. Turn the dial. Put to 19. There are a small burst of steam as the pressure changes. You open the torpedo tube and recover the mob, mob ship in a booze. Ooh, you got a barrel of tequila. There's a hatch leading to the submarine's lower deck. You open a hatch to discover the lower deck is completely flooded. You need some kind of breathing apparatus if you want to go down there. Fine. Make use of the diving helmet. I can fish first. You can't fish through the closed door and it's not close. And it closes if you're not holding it. Aww. Torpedoes have been ruined by water. Somebody should have damned them. This crate has been crusted shut by freshwater barnacles. Ironically, this is a crate of rust remover. <laughs> lock on this lockbox is rusted away, making it just a regular box. Let's see what's inside. Riches! Riches were inside. You're not sure if this sil enough silver bars if this is enough silver bars to count as a throw, but it's at least a heat. They'll sell for a pretty penny. What happens if I take it off? You don't want to drown, so you can't change your hat while you're underwater. We can first first tell Don Tobern that we did, did did the job. Hold him up back. 
Hello and form and growth around you. My name is Don Toblerone and he's speaking you on the telephone. English. Dutch is near Dutch is nearly English. Endeavor to not be so culturally unsophisticated. It will impede your personal growth. Ah, anyway, your submarine boost is safe. Bravo. You are certain to enjoy a fight if it is our newest vintage. Your next assignment will be to renovate an elderly and formerly abandoned radiophonic transmissile station. Renovated? Renovated as said that it no longer contains any vampires. We are apprehensive to the possibility that they will use the equipment contained therein to drop eaves upon our privation privatational communications. Well I certainly won't wish wouldn't wish that on anyone. But whatever. I know the place you mean. I already cleared all the vampires out of there. A fortuitous revelation. Your expediency is really off of the charts, so to speak. Your payment shall be delivered to your bed adjacent for furniture forthwith. Here's someone opening the window in your bedroom. Swell. You place a glowy orb thing on your knickknack shelf. The cool plasma ball from the radio shack is still crackling away on the shelf. Consider the orb. You gaze in the orb for a while. You gain it. Or gazer. You consider the orb, but have you considered what none of the orb was also considering you? Yes, yes, very good. We got plus one mysticality out of that. Wink. Another briefcase, another note. Slime. The success of your swamp-derived mission performance has not gone on unnoticed. The boss is duly impressified. DT. You got a briefcase full of me. The boss, huh? Wow. No message right now. Let's go to Largemouth Bass and Sons. Here's a grizzly sight. The carcass is some kind of swamp animal covered in huge ticks. Oh no, wait. Some of them are always buzzing around the air. Are they actually wasps? Aha, it turns out both things can be true. They're tick wasps, which are notable for being the only insect that can stab you with both ends. Ouch. You got wasp clasp and extra blood. Large mouth bass and sons. State your business. I'm here about the missing children. Tom and Kathy, yeah, that's a sad song. I need to talk to uh, I guess either Mr. Chapman or Mr. Tracy about that. But I wouldn't let either of them know that you've been speaking to the other the bosses, they don't talk anymore. Why don't the bosses speak to one another? Between you and me, 3,600 and 3,600 largemouth bass. Mr. Chapman and Tracy haven't been on speaking terms since Mr. Chapman was snubbed at the Academy Awards a few years back. We tolerate each other only because they form a vital function vital to the business. Which is, Mr. Tracy debones the fish and Mr. Chapman rebones them. Only then are the fish ready for sale to market. Are you saying that you take out the fish's bones and then put them back in? It's tradition for generations. Chapman has deboned the base. Bass and a Tracy rebones them. That unique process of what our gives our bass is distinctive tang. What goes on at this place? A large amount of bass and sons? We sell a large amount of bass, and most of us are sons. What do you think happened to the kids? If you ask me, that's what I just did. Hell, they ran off. Life is this life ends for everyone, and Tom and Kathy never had the makings of a large mouth bass with a deboner or a reboner. Hope you're not planning on sticking that rod in there. Largemouth bass is that exclusive license to fish those waters. I mean, I can fish here? No, Largemouth Sons has the fishing rights. Okay. I'll be a good boy. The sign identifies these waters as a site of historical importance. This pool is the birthplace of the largest mouth Luke, a bass present at the BA signing of the Declaration of Independence. On August 2nd, 1792, he returned to his home waters to die, but his body was never found. 1792, huh? That sounds like an excuse to go back to Ocean City.
There it is. You find something interesting. Died. Largest mouth Luke. Bass fish. Large. Oh, so it did die. Hmm. Ooh, you got moonsh you briefly lose track of where you're going because of all these wet big wet trees look the same. You stumble across a ramshackle dwelling bearing the unmistakable aroma of illicit distillation. The guard eyes you suspiciously. Are the shotguns keeping you out or something else in? Here's I'm going inside. This grizzled mariner must hate being stuck behind a desk. With a knife with a deboner doth still shape the large mouth pass, and the world through our action there are legion who do not believe and will tear down thy work. Book of Garrett. Empty to magnify the misfortune of my stolen daughter. When did this happen? Three nights ago. I'm still in shock. Can't even muster the strength to close the safe. I can do that for you. It's not too hard. Would you? Sure. Bless you. Greetings, as a mariner, do you hate being stuck behind the desk? Excuse me, I make six figures a year behind this desk and mind your manners. You're addressing Adam Tracy, chief of deboning officer, largemouth bass and sons. Are you here about Kathy? Saw some posters about missing children? That's right. Three nights ago, Kathy disappeared along with all her clothes and possessions. Condon's that safe there, and the company truck. Oh, and the Chapman kid. I think she might have run away from home. I'll excuse the remark as you don't know my Kathy, but suffice to say that's impossible. Kathy loves largemouth basses almost as much as assuming preordained roles in a multi-generational family business. No, Kathy would not simply leave home. There's a much simpler explanation. Occam's Gator. Occam's Gator? A monstrous Gator man, centuries old, ten feet tall if he's an inch. With their scales as blue as the deepest ocean. He has two tails as sharp as razors. He's not afraid to shave you. His appetites are insatiable. Strike it and gobble up our fish, guns, tax returns, whatever. And now I fear my Kathy. I don't know what we did to provoke his ire, but that beast has bullied and bothered our business since my grandfather was in taller pants. I sometimes think if the swamp itself has summoned it up to be our tormentor. Our friend Charles is missing. Could Hawkins have taken him too? Certainly it's possible. But I don't think the criminality of Hawkins' skater knows any bounds. If the Hawkins ate Kathy, aren't we too late? Not necessarily. Occam's only handicap is his glacially slow digestion. Go ask Sylvester, a guard of ours. He was swallowed up by the Occam's, but by stripping off in his belly and greasing his body in Occam's own fat, he was able to slither up and out of Occam's jaws while the great beast slept. Okay, where can I spin Sylvester? I don't know. We had to terminate him for attempting to unionize. I think the opter is King Goth, Occam's Gator ate Kathy? You have to understand. For decades, Occam's Gator has been the sole author of this business misfortune. Could he eat a child? Absolutely. That's his M.O. or monstrous operandi. Is there a finder's fee if I find her? Uh, find her? 300 meat and my grandfather fishing rod, but I'm running the show, alright? Not Chapman. I know he's got a missing boy too, but you can't involve a reboner in an operation like this. Far too emotional. If you're dealing with me, you keep him out of it. Let me think about it. Sure, I'll be here while you think. My daughter will be deciphering inside the belly of a gator. You're not close enough to recess. Yes, I am. Academy of Fresh and Saltwater Game Fish. Certificate of nomination for award. Let it be known that Adam Tracy was nominated for an Acad Aquatomy Award of Merit. For outstanding achievement. Best deboning. Bass. Looking for something? What's back there? Crew quarters off limits. You live here? Where the fish live, we live. Can I go inside? No, that's the space for the Tracy family, like our crypt. Can I go to that? You better not. It's the mess through there. I don't mind. I don't mean it's messy. I'm saying that's the room where we have meals. It's that type of mess. I thought they only use that term in the armed forces. You don't consider fashion to be a part of armed forces? What do you think we used to hold the rods? Arms? That's right. What's this guard who got eaten by the Occam skater? Sylvester didn't get eaten by anybody. I don't say that because it was the only excuse possible would accept for a two hour lunch break. I can tell you about large mouth Ga Luke. I've seen him, you know, eh? He's not dead like they say. How long can a largemouth bass live? 
Normally only 20 years or so, but Largemouth Luke is a special fish. Maybe someday I'll see him again. Love my job, getting paid to look at fish. It's chum bucket is guy. Stranger is just a chum you haven't met yet. Lucky this appears to the floor. Those are decorative, and the chum inside is the very first batch chum ever made by largemouth bass and solids back in the summer of 1803. Reminds us of our humble revoltings. Can I have it? No. This chum bucket is subscribed. Champagne for my real chums. Real pain for my sham chums. Chum pain for my real chums. Real pain for my chum chums. That one's a little more esoteric. A last beyond door is only for fishermen. What is it? Fish? Can I fish here? Ha! Fisherman's cats are a touchy sort, and regard unproven outsiders with the highest suspicion. You can't avoid your touch. You get the sense that only true loyalty to the fisherman's cause will overcome suspicions of you. Lo, with a reboning knife of the righteous has been a complete bass has been forged. It's back to your quarters. How would you know that? That's where Mr. Tracy has his. Here the two of you are more similar than you like to admit. Back up, Freud. Can I go inside? Into our family's private quarters. I soon will let dogfish loose into my socks. Is that something you do? Rarely. This must be the mess, right? It is. Where we proudly serve reboned fish. Just the way we like it. I don't want to see you slipping any bones out of that fish you hear. Can I go inside? I don't see any need for that. That's a failure of imagination in your part. I'll live. Surely a fisherman yearns for glorious death at sea and not to wind up behind the desk. Hello there, I wonder. Do you ever wish you had a glorious death at sea? Ho ho! Many a creature has tried to give me one, bucko, but before they can get their teeth in me, I rebone them six ways to Sontag. Spits while chewing the back on, out the door. D. Chapman, Chief Reboning Officer, Largemouth Bass and Sons. You hear about Tom? A lot of posters about missing children. Find one child and you'll find the other. My Tom has been lured into a lair of Occam's Gator by that Jezebel of a deboner's daughter. A good and true fisherman let us strip by a delinquent sorceress who never cared a Walt Whitman about the way Dewey were with largemouth bass. Think Tom could have run away on his own? Absolutely not. Tom's a third generation bass boy, proud and true. Why? Just last month he said, I'm excited about my future in reboning largemouth bass, Dad. Does that sound like the words of a boy with a one foot out the door? No, there's a simpler explanation. Siren saw Kathy Tracy, who lures good men into the bellies of gators. Ah, comes Gazer. Gator, I heard of him. Chapman's cheeks darkened to the murky hue of a humpback anglerfish. Long as there had been a largemouth bass and sun, there has been an Occam's gator, to our great misfortune. I venture that no creature land nor sea quite so terrible. Twelve foot tall as he is, red as a furnace, with smoke billowing from his nostrils. He and his rapacious appetites are plague on our business. He'll eat everything we got. Largemouth bass, everything. Keeps me up at night, wondering what we did to deserve him. Is it a sin against the land to both debone and rebone fish? Perhaps. Perhaps. Damn it! That's what gives our bass its zing! How is Kathy responsible? Oh, the arrogance of youth! Kathy Tracy never thought she had anything to fear from Occam's Gator. She didn't respect him. Several times I caught her attempting to summon my, the beast by shouting his name three times in a mirror, or directly into the mouth of the bass. It was always going to end with her in Occam's belly. I just didn't think my Tom would be a fool enough to go along with it. That's a little sexist, don't you think? Not remotely. I'm not saying anything about her gender at all. I'm only saying that she may have gotten my boy eaten by a gator man. When you throw the words like Jezebel around, that's a little loaded. Is it? I didn't mean anything by it. I'm willing to change. But you have to be patient with me, all right? I'm an old-fashioned. You can't keep up with this new ideas your generation has. Gender penicillin. Is there a finder's fee? 200 meat, mother's fishing rod for the entree. Watch on her cat on Chasey's dime. Tom that needs saving. He's saving from her. That's what. Condition. Oh, this will need to find Tom. That's two conditions. Is it a special fishing rod? Not this. I'll tell you why. It has never caught a fish. Oh, that sounds worse than a normal fishing rod. Never caught a fish. Always catches two. Don't know how it works. Don't want to know how it works. We just thank this item for the bounty. Let me think about it. Looking for someone myself. Charles Wallace? Hmm. See a fish? No. Then I'm not the person to speak. I'm a fisherman, friend. My bag is fish. Looking for a human. You ought to be asking sort of sort of a 
human fisherman. Aha! You are a human fisherman. His compression turned sour. Now that you poke a hole in his friend, he had lost interest in this conversation. Okay, I don't know where your friend is, alright? What's so special about your fishing rod? You can catch things that your scientists would say are impossible to find in water. So it doesn't catch fish? Yes, fish, but also impossible things. Let's come back to that one later. Burly hunter trotting through the mud gives a holler. As he he and ears, you see he's toting a shotgun under one arm and carrying a pile of gator hides over his shoulder. What are you doing? Swap's no place for our little kid. Gators will eat you alive. Take this. Get yourself a seat on the next bus out. Well, that's, uh, not enough money for the bus. Fine, fine. Take it. Let's go. Okay, I'm not a little kid, by the way. Moonshiner Shack. It's a chaotic mess of animal tracks leading in all directions. We identify several sets of tracks leading away from the cabin. Hmm. The Ramshackle Cabin, or a Ram Cabin Shack. This pot had been demoted from soup to chamber. Blech. Whoever was here last must have left in a hurry. There's still a poker game in progress. You draw cards until you beat all the hands that were left on the table. Then you collect your winnings. There's a spur card tire leaning against the wall here. The tread pattern on this tire identifies, identifies it as a Lincoln, which sounds like an impressive piece of deduction, but honestly, the hop pad and the beer were a dead giveaway. Rusty old fire powered still. You're pretty sure these aren't meant to be operated indoors. There's nothing in this jarro. Full of ashes, but they're cold. Seems like nobody's been here for a while. A couple of soggy bedrolls. Let's see, follow the human footprints. They lead to, let's call it, an improvised latrine a few yards away from the cabin. You decline to investigate further. What about the duck tracks? You just through a lengthy sequence of locations that are zero interest to non-ducks. Cow tracks? Follow the cow prints to a big hole in the ground next to the lion which a pair of shoes with fake cow hooves nailed to the soles. Huh. Horse tracks. You didn't follow the horse tracks in some water, but you didn't drink it. I mean, why would you? It's nasty swamp water. Cat tracks? You follow the cat tracks, but after a few minutes, they lead up to a tree you're not willing to climb. I guess if I'm being honest, there's, it's not... It's really a tree you're not capable of climbing. I'm just trying to preserve your dignity. Badger tracks. You start following the badger track, but after a few minutes, you realize this is a course of action might culminate in you encountering an actual badger, so you change your mind. Terrifying animals. Just, just the worst. Follow the tire tracks. You follow the tire tracks until you lose track of them in the water near a partially submerged cave. Check out the cave. Also, check out the cow shoes. Huh. You should clomp around like a cow. I guess it doesn't work if I'm in water. One of those Gator Man campsites. Maybe the ones who kidnapped Charles came this way. This camp has near similar to a previous one. A lot of Gator Man tracks, a lot of discarded trash. These Gator Man sure are slobs. This will find a 15 out of 6, 15 16th inch combination wrench called Naval CW. Looks like you're on the right track at least. Charles' other wrench. This must be referring to the deeper water that's way over to the right. Disobey. Ooh, close it. This Ford truck has been fitted with the Lincoln tires. That's a little ominous. This part of the cable is shiny. A couple of shady looking characters furtively skulking in this cave. Um, 
Hi. Hi. Hello. Who are you guys? We're the Schlitz brothers. I'm Clem, and shut up, Clem. They might be a pro he. Oh, uh, I ain't Clem, and I ain't Jarvis. Relax, guys. I'm not a prohibition agent. Just a passing through. My name's Slime. Phew, well, that's a relief. Sure is. Good to meet you, Slime. What are you doing in this weird cave? Got ourselves in a right predicament. That's what we've done. What happened? Well, me and Jarvis have been brewing up homemade hooch to sale, and now I'm sashing in the back of this here cave. We got wind that the pro he's was on our trail, so we figured we'd better cheese it. We'll pull the old 23 skidoo, you know? Had to find a packet of mean lizard varmints sent into the hooch, and they won't give it back. We was thinking we'd just take the loss of blood, but we hit another slag. What kind of snack? Went and locked the keys in the truck. Still don't get why you go and do a fool thing like that for. I told you, I don't like that I went and did it on purpose or nothing. Hmm, I'll see what I can do. These gator men got into the Schlitz Brothers statue of Hooch. They're popping bottle caps with their teeth guzzling down the contents and generally having too much good a good time to take notice of you. They growl at you menacingly. Plainly two saucers just jump up and attack you. On the other hand, if you get too near their booze, that could change in an instant. What am I looking at here? Oh, have you, in a, have you not seen a gator man yet? It's sorry, it's hard to keep track. These are the guys Jessica mentioned. They're pretty much what you'd expect from the name gator man. They're intelligent, upright walking alligators. They have tough scaly skin, lots of teeth, and pissy attitudes about everything that aren't already eating. They especially hate intruders, and are the second biggest reason that this swamp isn't a popular tourist destination. First being, it's a swamp. In any case, these gator men are all still growling in a general direction. Offer to mix them some drinks. Say, uh, you guys just drinking that stuff straight? Snl. Drink booze, so? Well, Cocktail crafting isn't my specific wheelhouse, but I know a couple of recipes. I could mix you up some drinks that would go down smoother than that pure ethanol you're drinking now. Tastes good? Mmm, yes. Mixed drinks. Great, I think I'll have the ingredients for what I call for one I call a Mickey Finn that I'm sure you'll enjoy. Dash of bitter, splash of orange juice, and a light dusting of soap for epic toast still spores. Later, the gator men are snorting loudly on the floor. Nice. Like a gift horse? Don't look a drunken gator in the mouth. Their teeth are creepy. Probably best to let this ga drunk gator sleep it off. Jarvis and Clem's hooch, or what's left of it? Grab it. You grab a case. Since you're heading back anyway, Jarvis and Clem can hold the rest themselves. This here hooch ain't for n nothing to shake a stick at, that's for damn sure. Let's also fix this truck, just be nice. You could probably cheap the door open if you had a wire coat hanger. In fact, I do. You get the car unlocked, but your coat hanger gets ruined in the process. Shucks. Jarvis knows kindly and you, but Clem is clearly fretting about the truck. Dealt with the gators. You can get your hooch at least, what's left of it. Well, heck, that's great news. Thanks, friend. We'll get to load the truck in a jiffy. I got your truck unlocked for you. Don't think that's a load off of my mind. Thanks, pal. I'm driving this time. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Look like you guys are good to go? Sure does. Thanks a million, pal. You really saved our bacon. And how? We ain't got much offer to you, pal. Offer you by way of rewards, but feel free to grab a carry of hooches, thank ya. Thanks. Quickly load the rest of the hooch in the back of the truck and drive away. Unfortunately, you guys forgot to pay attention to how they get the truck through that weird tree hole. Oh well, maybe next time. Mudhenge. Ooh, look, there's a big shiny treasure set on that two sock over there. What's a two sock? It's like a big clump of grass or a small hill. It's not really the important part here. How about that treasure chest? Are you sure that's what a two sock is? I thought that was a cast sock. What? No, that's a thing that priests wear. Like a close fitting robe. No, I think you can get a Cossack. This is a cast sock. It's not a Cossack. It's a 17th century Eastern European cavalry soldier. I'm sure, pretty sure you mean cavalry. Alright, okay, that's it. I'm done. Forget the chest. There's no chest anymore. Just go on to the next thing. She's touchy. I'm the one who does not know what the words mean. <laughs> Ooh, Moxius Mudbloom. Very clean booth for such a muddy henge. Welcome to Mudhenge. What is this place? Friend, it's a Mudhenge. What is that? It's one of the area's most popular henges. Folks travel from all over to see this mysterious mud. Are there stone engines like that? I don't see the comparison. You don't? She sighs. Look, we could talk for hours about Stonehenge. Stonehenge is big. Stonehenge is strong. I've gone over all this. 
So with respect, what I'm interested in talking about is Mudhenge, which is a formidable monument in its own right, and so much more than a first draft of Stonehenge as they say sometimes say in the magazines. What's so special about Mudhenge? Special? Well, during the Swamp Solstice, it's said that the needle of the compass placed upon a central altar will point not to west, but secret west, where it lies the thing you need the most. That special enough for you? When is the Swamp Solstice? If you're in a swamp, it's pretty much always a Swamp Solstice. What is Secret West? I'm no mystician, but Secret West is the direction in which lies the thing your heart is most missing. It is said that a comp compass laid on the altar of Mudhenge during the Swamp Solstice will point to Secret West. That was the object of the Mud Mudhenge challenge. But of course, we don't run the challenge anymore. Too hard. Too many missing presumed deads. What does that mean, thing your heart is most missing? Well, that's kind of up to you. Up to your heart, that is. Could it be a secret crush? That new job? Maybe just a piece of bread. Heck, I don't even know if, I'm going, if I've even got a heart that works. But whatever you're missing, maybe you'll find it. Out secret west away. I'm looking for someone. Charles Wallace. About my high similar build. Of the missing person? Person? I didn't mean to presume. Just a lot of folks have a habit of walking into Mudhenge and never coming out. That's why I don't promise to promote the Mudhenge challenge anymore. That's the very real thing of going missing that makes Butthenge a very popular destination for tourists. Tourists want to go missing? Oh sure, folks get their thrills in different ways, but in the end, we all gotta get them. Me, I like to make earrings out of live scorpions. Is that dangerous? Mostly for grasshoppers on my shoulders. Then again, but again, they need the thrill. I like to visit Mudhenge. Well, and why wouldn't you? It's the best and most mysterious henge on this side of the border. Mission is to meet. What border? I believe it's all of them. I'll pay for anything I can do for free. Think about hopping the fence? Sure, go ahead. But there's one thing you haven't counted on. You won't have the informational brochure that comes with your ticket. Ooh, information! I'll take it. I knew you wouldn't be able to come all this way without seeing the famous Mudhenge. Here's a pamphlet that goes over about everything we know about the history of this ancient monument. Don't be a stranger. Short brochure complimentary with your admission to Mudhenge. Little is known about the history of Mudhenge. Okay. Welcome to Mudhenge. How do I get in? Get in into Mudhenge? I don't see a gate. Why would there be a gate? Oh, I see. No. Entry to Mudhenge himself is prohibited by Monument Protection Council. Your ticket only gives you access to the observation area. We don't want you getting lost trying to complete the Mudhenge challenge, do we? Where's the observation area? It's sort of this general area here. I'll, I'll just go past. Whoa! Translated, the message of the rock reads, Drowneth Mary's crown pa buried past the huge tower. Well, I am already lost. What's that over to the east? This crazy gator man appeared out of nowhere as champing at the bit to make sure you're nowhere five minutes from now. Clean his clock. Gator Man rallies for another round, but a hand rises from the swamp and drags him down screaming. Backpack session of swamp is certain to contain illicit material. Parental guidance is advised. Open it. There's a complete change of clothes in the sack and a black embossed card sticking out of the back pants pocket. Read the card. Drown Mary's crown is buried past, buried past a huge tower. Phrase so nice, you read it twice. Turn the card over. The new decree, nothing is worn, everything is visible. You'd like to leave everything in the bag where you found it. Nothing is your size anyways. Ooh, Hoboglyph. According to this, there's an old boxcar nearby that the railroad company abandoned when it sank into the swamp. Sounds intriguing. I guess I can't just get out of here using the thing.
Okay, so it all leads to the same thing, I guess. Definitely lost. I don't see any people anymore. Hmm. Wait. I'm hopelessly lost. I take to be a giant bleeding tooth jutting out of a tree stump turned out to be one of those mushrooms that looks like a giant bleeding tooth. Take the blood. Sunken boxcar. Phew! Finally found ya! Everything good, Simone? Not used to operating in adventurer mode, but sure. Why'd you find me? Oh, I just whipped us in a little program to determine the most statistically likely place you go next. Gosh, am I that predictable? Everybody is with the right math. This looks very dangerous. Everything has predictably fallen off of this table. Poetry jokes are full of slant rhymes. This would fail a railroad, railroad safety inspection for at least two reasons. You're perplexed by the hobo's decision to sleep with his head pointing downhill. It's a diagonal hobo, although I suppose from your perspective he looks normal. Oh hi, sorry, I didn't know anyone was living here. Suppose I should stop being surprised by that. But it's all right, quite alright, I'm Pepperidge Dolphin. Welcome to my humble abode. Thanks, I'm Slime Green. Next box car you out here, far from being a little steep. Steep? Oh, yes. You know, I've grown so accustomed to the tilt, I hardly notice anymore. Or from when I try to play marbles. We must be really going downhill. Yes, quite. Your accent is different from most hobos I've met. Well, my family is from old money, you see. How old? Old enough that it all turned to dust. All that remains is a rambling old manor house that I can't afford to maintain. So, I decided this will be a splendid opportunity to expand my horizons. The horizon is typically a bit more level. 
Why are you living in a boxcar in a swamp? Well, to be honest, it's been difficult to part with the old estate. It says, as far as I've been able to get before the homesickness becomes overwhelming. Aw, oh, how bittersweet. Indeed, I wonder, could you spare the time to help me? I could be done with the place if I had proper souvenir, specifically my father's collection of antique padlocks. And you can't get them yourself because of the memories? It's more of a lack of memories. I've forgotten where the keys are. Sure, I'll help you. Thank you. There are 11 locks all together, except they won't actually all be together, will they? I'm afraid not, no. Here, I'll mark the location of the house on your... Is it a sponge? There's also something I would should tell you about the house. Oh good, here it comes. I just want to let you know there aren't any ghosts haunting the property. Property. There aren't any? That's correct. Not a one. My family and ha never suffered any violent or traumatic deaths. This is something you felt you had to warn me about. Not really a warning as such. I just thought you might like to know. Huh. Okay, thanks. I'll be back with your 11 padlocks. Flash your light cuts through the trees, and the glass glare passes when you see it. Poking at chat out of the canopy, a telescope! Oh, I fancy the telescope ever since you were a child. You press your nose to the window of the telescope shop for hours, the proprietor would run out and threaten to tan your glutes with a tripod. I think you're thinking of something else. That has never happened to you? Funny, it's a pretty universal experience. Anyway, telescope's up there in the trees if you want it. Keep going where you're going. Looks like this car was left to rot. Unfortunately, it hasn't rotted enough for you to get past the locked door. Jimmy it open. You unlock the car, destroying the you unlock the car, destroying the hangar. The process. You search the car. It's empty except for the glove box, which turns out to be actually be a key box. The key inside is not the key to this car. And if you have a sense of humor like mine, you'll agree that this is a real shame. Not one of these Gator Man campsites. Maybe the ones who kidnapped Charles came this way. It's another Gator Man camp, all right. And there's four more wrenches here: a 31 by 32, 63 with 64th, and 127th, 128th inch one. Whoever needs that, and two 55, two 56. Charles must carry one heck of a toolbox. These wrenches are laid out in the shape of an arrow, pointing towards a nearby hill. On the top of the hill, you can see some sort of fort in the distance, apparently hammered together out of rusty scrap metal. That's got to be where the Gator Man took him. You grab all the wrenches and combine them with the other ones he dropped to complete a set. Front door's Do Dauphin Manor is unlocked. Apparently Mr. Dauphin's love of padlocks was unrelated to basic basic home security. This couch faces a wall. Must have been the Dauphin family's punishment couch. Calpernia Dauphin. Died of natural causes. Mopey Dauphin. Died of natural causes. Hortense died of natural causes. Beasley died of natural causes. Goldilocks died of natural causes. Fansworth died of natural causes. Ooh, radio. Fancy serving cart. It's one of those serving carts they in posh hotels and in posh manor houses, apparently, with a big silver platter covered with a dome shaped lid. Just the right size to hide a severed head or a roast of some kind. Look in the dome. You cautiously reach out and grip the handle, and take a deep breath. Slowly you lift the lid, tilting your head to peek underneath. Oh, it's empty. No padlocks on the dinner table. That's uh, both a rule and an observation. Though find China to beat an army, you could only get to pass the padlock. And if you were in command of the world's hoity toityest military. This won't, this oven is full of gross, steamy swamp worms. Ugh. Pepperidge fa in Pepperidge's father's house, there are many drawers. What up the sink? through them. Ooh, fuse. And one of the padlocks. The community has turned most of these dry goods into stale goods. See if there's anything good left. We got fruit cocktail. Ooh.
Oh yeah, can I open this, this garage? Garage key. You pop the lock off and the door unlatches with an ominous creak. Enter the garage. This cinder blocks are totally waterlogged. Wait a second. One of the blocks has a telltale glow of mana moss infestation. You drain the moss with its glowing juices. Some say they're the most powerful tools of padlock. It's really more opposite of a tool though, because it obstructs rather than facilitates what you're trying to do. Old Dome fan never got sick of tires. Brook bunch covered with tools, all rusted past the point of usefulness, even as bludgeons. Basement of the swamp house is, predictably, completely flooded. It's a kind of breathing apparatus if you want to go down there. Diving helmet! This box will need the exact right amount of air to make it float like this. Nature really is glorious. Sunken chest! What terrible secrets might it contain? Ooh, it's a chest full of riches! Possibly cursed riches! Not that possible curse is going to stop you from taking them, of course. This sadly ruined books all have titles like Solved Mysteries and Exciting Tales of Nonviolent Crime. These dry goods have been forced by circumstance and no longer refer to themselves that way. I think there's anything good. The only container that didn't spring a leak, or rather get a leak sprung into it, was this can of Vichy Swiss. No longer matters whether the machine is hooked up to the water supply or not. Somebody left a scarf in here. Clammy scarf, plus five hot armor. Ooh. Whether there was any evidence of this scarf being used as shrinkles to someone to death, it's all been thoroughly washed away. Whatever these barrels were used to be full of, it's full of water now. This medicine cabinet is surely locked. Maybe it's full of deadly poisons. The fans use to one toilet at a time, just like the rest of us. Flush it. Hmm, doesn't work. Maybe something's wrong with the tank. Check it out. Well, there's your problem. There's a key stuck to this float valve hinge flange. This battle is full of steaming blood! Oh no, wait. Red is just light coming through the stained glass rose hanging in the bathroom window. Still doesn't explain why the water is so hot, though. so far. Nothing underneath the bed except dust. A shelf full of books about sports. Ties are all too boring for me to even tell you what they are. Wardrobes were very important in old houses like this that didn't have built-in closets to keep skeletons in. You relieve the furniture of its contents, none of which are skelet skeletal ones. You count the coat hanger. You got work pants and a coat hanger. Comfortable looking bed, free of bloodstains or vaguely person shaped lumps under the blanket. Check under the pillow. Ooh, shiny. Someone's trading in a key shaped tooth. Nice hand has one empty drawer and one locked drawer, and an eerie, ghostly sound is coming from inside it. The toy box is disappointingly empty. Not even a BB gun or a creepy doll. Maybe the doll is hiding elsewhere. Huh. Unlock with a shiny key. There's a jewelry box on this table. Open it. It contains, to your non-surprise, jewelry. Perfectly normal jewelry. A fancy nightstand. Fancy nightstand's contents are disappointingly non-fancy. You're hoping this key would be much fancier. This bed looks inviting, but nobody seems to have accepted the invitation for quite some time. The cedar chest is locked and easily big enough to hide a skeleton in, or even a whole body. It's fancy vanity, which appeals to your pedestrian vanity. Look through the drawers. There's a leftover makeup into one of the drawers. Neat. Oops. 
unlock it. You assume that Dope Fan was superstitious enough to not store any padlocks on the east side of his attic. That's how you get family curses, probably. Lots of boxes, but none of them say padlocks on them, and they're not motivated to search them otherwise. Who knows what grisly things you might find. This workbench is strewn with bits and gizmos and bits of gizmos. Amongst all that, you'll find what looks like a miniature radio car from Driftwood. Grab it. A radio small enough to carry? Amazing! Maybe you listen to it periodically, it'll warn you about any nearby monsters that are actually manifestations of your repressed traumas. Or maybe it'll just give you the base doll scores. With a better radio in the world will be the path to your door. Better one than this one, I mean. You hold the radio up to your ear. Boy asks, Gee, Pop, where'd you get all that treasure? It's a... Uh, is it a cursed pirate horse sold from the ruins of an ancient civilization? Aha, uh -huh, no, son, nothing like that. The sound of in are perfectly normal and moral financial markets. Those voice is so eerie. You hold the radio up to your ear. You hear a little girl's voice shouting, Mom, Mom, a terrible ghoul stole the key to my nightstand. Owen replies, Now, dear, don't call your brother Ralph a terrible ghoul. He probably hid that key in the potted plant in the hall like he always does. Some dirt in a planter were presumably a plant in a planter once stood. You dig around the dirt and find a key. So predictable, that Ralphie. I feel like I'm hearing ghosts. I'm definitely hearing ghosts. You hold a radio up to your ear. Ghostly voice wails, Who stole my golden arm? Then a boy's voice says, oh, Come on, sis, don't you know any other ghost stories? That's the only one you ever tell. Unlock it. You got a recover padlock and a creepy music box. You hear a man's voice scolding angrily. For goodness sakes, Agnes, you're obsessed. Obsessed with taping things to the backs of paintings, just like your aunt, one eyed Calpernia Dolphin. You'll probably die peacefully in your sleep, just like she did. Hmm, could this be you, one eyed Aunt Calpernia? Considering the eye patch and the fact that the painting is labeled Calpernia Dolphin? Look behind the painting. It's a key tape to this back. Classic Calpernia. Remember, Ralphie, says a woman's voice. You mustn't ever open a door to strangers. A boy's voice replies. Okay, Mom, because it might be a kidnapper or a murderer, right? Oh, I'm sure that would never happen. But it might be a vacuum cleaner salesman, and we already have one. Ralphie, why on earth do you keep flushing this fish zester down the commode? Have you been possessed by some otherworldly or demonic force? No, Dad, I just thought it'd be some funny place to hide it, comes a reply. Please be careful around the kitchen knives, Rebecca. They're very sharp. I keep them that way because counterintuitive though it may be, dull knives actually cause more accidents. Yes, mother, I understand. Little voice, a little girl, girl's voice replies. I wonder if I can listen to it in the... No, it's not gonna let me listen to it down here. What's this uh, sticky padlock key? says, Clarence, I'm so grateful that our families never suffer from supernatural causes, serial 
curses be Ariel, murder, demonic corruption, or plague. I agree, dear. We certainly have been fortunate, and doubtless will remain so. Owen's voice casts, Oh my, Clarence, why are you lying on the floor under your workbench? Are you alright? Were you attacked by a burglar or an axe murderer? Calm down, Agnes, I'm fine. I'm just practicing changing the oil in our car. The tool, tool chest can remain contains one tool and one key, which I guess also counts as a tool, albeit an extremely specific one. So, two tools then. Oh jeez, that blood all over the- Oh no, it's just rust. Never mind. If rust were poetry, this key would be an ode to age and neglect. It's a creepy music box, which is to say it's a music box. The convenient thing about products with radium in them is that they're easy to find in the darkness of the coffin they'll ultimately put you in. Hmm. Wink. You open the cabinet door and examine the... Sacks of fine bone china. Wait, bone china? Perhaps human bone china? Oh no, the brand marks on the bottom is a pretty well-known company, so probably not. Anyway, you find a really fancy hat. You got a fine china helmet. It's entirely possible that this is just a gravy this is a gravy boat that that you're using it upside down, but don't let that stop you. Definitely might be missing a key. Hmm. Oh, this tree has a hole in it. Conveniently, the hole is slightly larger than your hand. Honestly, for what is ostensibly a horror game, we've had way too few opportunities for you to stick a hand into a suspicious dark hole. <laughs> you slowly reach inside a dark hole. It's damp and ominous, and then... You find a key. Sorry, that scream wasn't really justified. You got a Dolphin Padlock key. Mossy. This key is running to the earth whence it came. You know, which padlock does this one unlock? This fridge is empty in both expired food and expired hide and seekers. You do find a key inexplicably frozen into a block of ice, though. You can't tell if this was done as a prank or by somebody trying to break a habit of fishing with their keys. Maybe we can just toss it in the hot bathtub.
nice warm bath caused the ice to relax and dropped the key with a grateful sigh. Unlock it. Hey god. Mercury eye drops. This product is safe and effective and don't ever let anybody tell you that it's any different. Cause pad and Birthward's finest tooth wax. Uh, that's 10 padlocks. I need one more. Bench covered with tools, all rusted point of point of usefulness has even as budgets. Wait a minute, is this the bench that woman on the radio was talking about? Did she say that? Oh yeah, lying on the floor under the workbench. Check under the bench. You find a key taped next to an old oil can. Go back to the second floor. Nope, not the attic. There we go. That should be the last one. There's a veil in here, and beyond the veil, nothing. You got perfumed wedding veil. This will come in handy if you ever need decide to save money by getting by getting married in the city dump. Hmm. Well, okay then. You run, as you run a clump of mangrove trees, or whatever kind of trees there are, you come across his face with a bearded gator man and his built, big filthy sack. I should clarify that it's a burlap sack and doesn't even have a face, just a gator man does. Oops, uh, buy sack, 129 meat, sale final. Uh, sure. You open the bag and reveal your prize, it's like Crimbo, a sad, wet, dirty Crimbo. Gator man skin pants. Not to be confused with Gator Man skin pants. These are pants made of skin and worn by a Gator Man. You're not sure what kind of skin they're made of. Hmm. Hi, Pepperidge. Hello again, Slime. What can I do for you? Find your father's padlocks. Thank you so much. You didn't run into my grandmother by any chance, did you? No. Was she supposed to be there? Well, no, that would... That would have been highly unusual if she had been, considering she died more than 30 years ago. Here's your padlocks. Marvelous. Once I reaccustom myself to standing on level of ground, I'll be on my way. There's a big hobo camp near Ocean City that you might be interested in. I can give you directions. Ah, excellent. I think I will head that way now. Perhaps I'll see you there. Treehouse. Bald Cypress is so tough and tall, it's no surprise some fellow has chosen to make use make of it a tree home. Hello? Hey pal, why don't you keep walking now? This here is Will Hunter's treehouse, and rules is taint no grown-ups allowed. Who are you? Will Hunter, as I said. What's up there? Oh, taint. Oh, it taint anything. I swear. You don't want to see anyways. How many telescope you got there? Afraid of telescope, property of Will Hunter. Same as I licorice collection. What's your story, Will? Ain't much to tell. Ain't that all that interesting, pal, I swear. Not city folk like you, in no ways. What are you doing in the swamp? Nothing special. Same things every boy gets up to, I reckon. I must know what that is. I ain't telling anyways. Can you let me up? No adult's ever been in Will Hunter's treehouse, and I ain't fixing to break that streak. Not for nothing. You need to let me up. That's so? Well, what's in it for Will? Ending my vital mission against the forces of evil. Mission, huh? That kind of like a job? I ain't got no job, pal. And I ain't need one. I'm facing to get by in life through general scampery. I don't think I know I'm helping you up the tree. Maybe you'll have to think of something else. Let's climb the tree. You know what to do. Time to clasp your robust limbs around the trunk of the wet, sh shedding cypress and begin to shimmy. Hey now, this is a private tree, yeah. Stop or I'll tan you till you can't stand up. Take the risk. Well, there's no boy up this treehouse after at all. Only the large and sagging features of a human face sunk into the tree's very trunk. Surely that can't be young Will Hunter. Ah, uh, well, I reckon now, taint. 
No keep news and see my plight. I've been wicked, pal. What happened to you? It ain't much to tell. It can't possibly be true. The great tree sighed, shedding a scraps of shedding scraps of bark that dripped to the treehouse floor. Have you ever heard of a dock tour? You know what that is? Yes, well, I know what a doctor is. Heck, why are you gonna be so mean for? I reckon most people like you go and ask and they couldn't tell you one thing about what a doctor does. I only met one doctor. Dr. Wiss. Wiss? Lived on the same street as my step aunt. It was one morning and paid me six bits to paint his fence and, well, heck, I swear I'm fixing to do it, pal. But I heard there was an interesting trout down the river. Well, a little wider than the average, but not very wide. It's the way Will Hunter likes. How can a boy resist? Are you asking me? Nah, I'm telling you, pal. Will Hunter couldn't resist a gander out of trout, and any boy who says he could is lying. Anyway, Doc Weiss. Doc Weiss, he weren't real pleased, and he teach me a lesson he went and cursed me to be a tree. How did this doctor turn into a tree? Don't ask Will Hunter how. All I know is doctors. They got all kinds of powerful tools. Tweezers, tight chart, couldn't use anything. Well, that's not you're supposed to learn from this. Thought I had to paint fences if I'm says I'm fixing to. Can you end this curse? Well, the doctor told me I'd be a tree till I could make good by painting a bunch of fences all around town. Hard enough for me to do it like this, I'll tell you. I can do that for you. Aw, oh, pal, paint fences? You wouldn't want to do that. Sure I would. The wind picks up and snaps off a few weak twigs, but Will doesn't seem to mind. Say, that's real swell. Thanks a lot, pal. The doc who cursed me had a nice white picket fence, and he said something like, Will Hunter's gotta paint three more fences just like this, or he'll be a tree forever. Paint three fences. Paint. Paint three fences, got it. You can get my paints and brush out of my knapsack. I just hand it to you, but I am a tree. Is there a ladder you could put down? Suppose I can. It ain't a ladder in the way you and I know it, though, but part of this tree... I can sort of waggle around. I were still a boy. I can reckon you can say it like my fingers or nostrils. Will Hunter extends his long, arborescent fingers and or nostrils through the hole in the treehouse back to the swamp floor. You should be able to climb down, climb down those nostrils now. I'll see you around, Will. There's something to find a fence sooner than the last place you'd expect. It's a Huck Knapsack, the favorite brand of rascals and imps. You got Will's paint and brush. Take care of those, will ya? That long-handled brush belonged to my grandfather. Your grandfather? Don't think so. Belong to a grandfather, okay. When you reach a certain age, a boy loses enthusiasm for hoarding rocks in a treehouse. This is called the Death of Innocence. Telescope is a gateway to lens that often leads to the use of binoculars. You see nothing out of the ordinary. Rivers run around the trunks of trees, crawlheads and crawl moms make love upon the rocks, and a duck is impaled on the peak of a heron. Here in a swamp, it is a day like any other. In circle, life turns on and on. I could have sworn we saw some fences somewhere. Ooh. A ring. You acted earlier in combat. And give the armor proper burial. Hence. Looks pretty clean to you. Sure does. Prince Simone and Stoth investigating an abandoned campsite. Nothing much left. Whoever the camp this was, they came and went ages ago. Must have left quick. This lean too has made a primo great canvas. Hang on a sec. What are you doing? Shane to let go to waste, and being both an engineer and a girl who grew up on a farm, I had a pretty decent repertoire of clothing hacks in my arsenal. After a while, while or two, Simona's repurposed a canvas tarp into a stylish and durable military-style flight jacket. You wash. Someone will write a novel about this jacket someday. Probably get the color wrong, though. I'm not sure if that's a reference to something. Monster Shack. Ugh, this swamp really stinks. Barf, barf. Is there a scientific reason for that? Well, yeah, I mean, there's a scientific reason explanation for everything. That's what science is. 
Chemistry isn't my specialty, but I think basically it's because decaying plant matter produces methane and that makes it with sulfur in the mud, resulting in pessimal smellification. That's flammable though, right? You could use it to power your robot or something? I don't want my robot to smell like egg farts, but here, if you want to experiment, when I'm not around, I'll bottle some for you. You got condensed swamp gas. Is in here? No. In a gloomy cave of sunken cypress trees, a well muscled woman stands waist deep in an opaque bog. Her hands rest on the pommel of a sword, its blade lodged in the muck. It catches your eye because it's not the type of thing you tend to see in the East Coast. What sword is that? This is a blade of your great aunt. Many moons ago, it was entrusted to my family for safekeeping. It is yours to reclaim at a cost. What great aunt? Have you forgotten your lineage child? Time was every tavern and meeting house kept a place by fire for Hilda Green. But I had to pay for my family's sword. The security guaranteed by my family is unique and comes with a great price. Your great aunt knew this. It is why she placed the blade in our care. It was the cost. In time I shall ask you of you a boon, and you shall be obliged to grant it. Sure I can do a boon. Let's have the sword. The sword has a satisfying heft. You can see why your great aunt liked it so much, but it comes with something quite unsatisfying. Something that makes you feel almost queasy and a little cursed. What's this? It's a simple magic binding you to your oath until such as time I need of your service. On that day I shall find you. Can we just do the boon thing now? She's gone. Slipped away into the dark waters of the swamp. Unfortunate. It's a great sword. Better be a good great sword. Well, that's unfortunate. I need all my I need all my stats. Ooh, you step across a copse of swamp cypress into the edge of the gloomy clearing, quite but the sound of dirt raining upon an open grave. Two burly men work hurriedly with shovels to bury the corpse of the Gator Man, who is at whose epaulets, hat, and mailbag mark him as some sort of a manner of mailman. As the gator is swallowed whole by the mud, his grave digger straightened up and looked you in the eye, sweaty but defiant. He was stumbled upon the darkest and most secret part of the swamp, where sins are buried, and gators. Where'd that ticket lady go? Oh. This is spooky. I wonder if that means I have to unequip everything.
Oh, I'm confused. Let's go to the Leathers Brothers. Oh, well, here's a grisly sight. The carcass is some kind of swamp animal covered in huge ticks. Oh no, wait. Some of them are buzzing around in the air. Are they actually wasps? Oh, we've already seen this one. Oh, right, we lost Simone. Careful of them, or I might tan your hide. Something said about the dead gator? I swear I didn't know he was a mailman. Would never intentionally hurt a mailman. I never accused you of killing you, hell. Mailman? Ah, hell, me and my big mouth. It was in my way, you understand? I had no idea he was a mailman. Never would have touched a mailman if I had known. My brother, you had nothing to do with it, understand? I swear it. What's wrong with killing a mailman? Listen to yourself. Can't tell you ain't a hunter, alright? Most any species is a fair game for hunting, but mailmen are protected by international treaty. Last time I know who hunted a mailman got pulled up by the International Criminal Court and mailed to Mars. Is he okay? Obviously he ain't okay, don't joke with me, that's a nightmare scenario for a hunter. Getting mailed to Mars? She shivers down my spine, it does. Who are you? Me? Ain't much to my story, I'm a hunter. Name of John Leathers, and if you can't tell from the accent, I'm from Albion. Stoddler, I hunt a small game like mosquitoes and gnats. They move on to foxes and wolves, and such as I grew up. I like the game over here, but I got my eye on the greatest hunt of all. Humans? Big picture. I like to build a ladder to the heavens so I can hunt the dinosaurs. That's a five to ten, more of a five to ten year plan, though. Um, but I don't think that's how la either ladders or heaven works, but it's good to have a dream. Let it be more practical to build a time machine. Now that just sounds ridiculous. John White's proud with the blade. Power. I've never been so asked many questions before. You can talk to talk, all right, but what about hunting to hunt? I got work that needs doing, and I ain't going out while they're searching the swamp for the sod who killed their mailman. If they find me, I'm dead. Don't have to be another man to know which way the wind blows. What are you asking me exactly? Working on a real something real important. A project. And I without any five gator hides. Even though a place you might find them. Sculpted out myself. Couldn't be easy on levels a smaller number of gator hides. What's the project you're talking about? Not so fast, and you know I can trust you first. I wouldn't go in there if I were you. Why? I don't like what you see. That egg is busted. Told you it wasn't a pretty sight. I was looking forward to that eating that egg all day and come dinner time, but I only went and bloody dropped it. Is that a cater egg? Nah, I think it's from a dog. Sorry for your loss. A sack of genuine leather. It's empty. It's only made of genuine leather. It does not contain genuine leather. The ambiguity is clear now, and the person responsible for the original description has been sacked. The bedroom must be where John accesses Hunter's Dream. What's that? Hunter's Dream? If you have to ask, it's not meant for you. I want to go there. If you prove yourself a hunter, maybe. Man observes you with monk-like serenity. Alright, it looks like you set up a quite a training post here in the swamp. John shakes his head. Paul can't speak. Why did you become mute, Paul? That's a very personal question. Sorry. That ain't a problem, it's just audio of mine to make observations in the nature of questions. Basically, Paul lost his tongue in a poker game. Can we trade? I have a two already. We have the skin pants. Ooh, pickaxe! I need this.
Oh wait. All nod acknowledges you with a phlegmatic nod. Gross. Phlegmatic doesn't mean full of phlegm, it means calm and controlled. Say that then. Paul acknowledges you with a calm and controlled nod. We can definitely use that somewhere. Let's go to the monster shack. Now here's a sad sight. Old house abandoned long ago in the swamp, half sunk in a wet muck that passes in the parts for roads. Might have been might have been a nice family in the house at one time. Now you look at Now look at it. It's a shame is all. Jeepers creepers, there's a bandit shot dead on the floor, right in the foyer. Must have come here looking for treasure by the look of it. He wasn't the only one. Oh, the stink of death hangs heavy in this place, alright. Explore! Holy gosh, seeing room is littered with bodies, three more bandits, and an entire defensive line of the Ocean City football team. Obvious what happened. Bandits and football players got sold the same line on the buried treasure by some shifty rumor monger. Both groups came here searching for their fortune, ran into each other, and everyone got shot to pieces. Remember that double dealer who sold him up the tip is now? He better be smiling. Oh, he's here in the kitchen, but also shot by a bandit and a linebacker, looks like. But he got him too, poor pathetic souls. Now the bedroom, the finish line, and here's who made it. Quarterback and a wide receiver. You figured they'd have been on the same side, but they shot each other in the back, simultaneously. There's nothing in here but a single jewelry box on a nice sand. Ain't that funny. All that death for a couple trinkets. Nothing rots like a person like greed. Wink. You got jewelry case. Continue where you were going. Ooh, golden gamish ring, turquoise bangle, and scabrous ring. Scabrous, uh, scabrous ring. Hobo code. This code reads: These kids are all right. That's pretty heartwarming. You're not sure if this is forbidding access or describing the shack's occupants. Inside you find not the decayed and crumbling tumble-down shack strewn with ancient wreckage that you were perhaps expecting, but an actually maintained and fairly clean tumble-down shack strewn with 12 to 14 year old kids. What the? Hey, what are you old kids doing out in the mirror of a swamp? Why wouldn't we be? Because it's dangerous here! Yeah, but this is where the monsters are! That's that's why it's dangerous! Do you believe in monsters? I believe the real monster is man. All six kids sign rolled their eyes at you. Okay, I guess I deserve that. You believe in monsters or not? You can't join us in Monster Squad unless you do. I mean, I'm fighting Eldritch monsters and tentacles, so yes, of course I do. It'd be a real feat of cognitive dissonance otherwise. You mean, you've seen them? Ooh, for really real? Well, yeah, which one? Which one? Ah, uh, Fishman? Oh, those don't count. Those are, those are just weird jerks. I'm looking for real monsters. I don't understand what real means in this context. If you believe in monsters, you can join our Monster Squad. Otherwise, we can't tell you anything because it's secret. Okay, I'll join. Great! It'll be nice to have someone who can reach the top shelf on these old bookcases to be scavenged. That's it? Is that it? I'm a member now? Yeah, we used to have a big ceremony where we had to repeat a vow and stuff, but it took too long and we're all busy with our research. Come on in and have a look around. Thanks. Well, first I'm gonna close this shadow pouch. Ooh, cat! Little sign on the table says Boris only. This kind of better be Boris, or there's gonna be some trouble. Boris is at you. He must know you're an outsider. Dozens of volumes and serial fantasy for young adults and older than average children. Princes? Well, there's Ira Turner and the Challenge of Glory. Oh, but what's this? You got an item. Mars Capone's Monster or the Modern Provolone. An old timey fantasy novel about a mad scientist and his doomed quest to create the perfect thing out of cheese. Ooh, some of the cheesy ally. You read the cautionary tale and take the exact wrong lesson from it. Sure, tampering with forces beyond his control killed his Mark Marscapone clown, but you're built different. You got an eminental elemental. There's an appendix at the end of the book with a bunch of boring science details. If you can memorize the appendix, you'll have summoned your summon em eminental elemental's muscle mysticality and moxie will be increased by three. Uh Hold on.
We're supposed to read this too. Does mean we can invest in invest in more skills. You internalize internalize the details in the appendix, allowing you to strengthen all the other organs of your creations. Elemental elemental has been upgraded. You summon a test element who grabbed a book out of your hands and tears it in half. It's alive, alive. Increase meat drops a little more. One more time, sure, why not? Yeah, we got sixty percent meat drops. Look at all that sleaze and hot armor, too. Big leather-bound tome sits on the pedestal here. What's this book? List of vampire nests? That's like 400 pages long! Lots of vampires in this swamp. If you want to help, you can always go clear some of them out. I guess that's an infinite way to fight vampires. This kid is, uh, well, he's eating something. Hi there. Hi! Don't mean to be rude, but what's your deal, kid? I'm a moss man! You are, huh? Okay, well, not really, but I want to be a moss man when I grow up. That's why I'm eating all this fertilizer. Um, it's actually cornflakes. I'm just pretending. Okay, Hugh. Haha, <laughs> yeah, I'm not crazy. Some people say I'm crazy for believing in the moss man, though, but I know he's real. I've seen him! What's a moss man? A man made of moss? Yep, he's all fuzzy and green. It's so neat! Oh, hey, you should go see him for yourself! And if you bring back proof he exists, people won't think I'm weird anymore. Well, they might. Sure, I'll go have a look. Great, here, I'll mark the place on your map. It's called Moss Rock Grotto. You see him? Try to bring back some moss as proof, okay? Okay. This kid is starting far more intently than you ever did at his age. What are you reading? About Neanderthals and other early hominids. Unfortunately, I'm not finding anything useful in here. What are you looking for? The Honey Ape! How about now? You never heard of it? It's a very famous monster. It's a hairy primate or primate-like creature that's smaller than a human, but with human-sized hands. Most of the legend call it Big Hands, but I'm pretty sure Big Hands legends and the reports of honey ape sightings are referring to the same cryptid. That's interesting. I know it lives around here somewhere. I just haven't been able to find it yet. I'll help you look for it. That'll be excellent. Thank you. Here, I found some of the prints down once and made a tracing. It might help you track it down. I'll try and get one of his fingernails as proof. All a fingernail be proof because it'll be bit of because it'll be big as a human fingernail, obviously. All right, you're sure that this is a handprint of the honey ape and not just a handprint of a regular guy. This kid is preoccupied with repeatedly smelling two large test tubes. What do you got there? Perfume samples? Kinda. This one's a combination of hydrogen sulfide and methane, common swamp gas, basically. Ill. What's the other one? Coffee. To clear the swamp gas smell in my nose. Uh, okay. So, why? I'm researching a creature known as the Smell of the Wisp. I've only run into it once, but I have a good memory for smells. So, if I figure if I can match a smell, that particular chemical mix will tell me more about it. A smell of the what? Wisp. It's a cloud of intelligent swamp gas. Some people say it's the ghost of a dead chili cook-off judge, but I think there's probably a lot more scientific explanation. You're telling me you're looking for an intelligent f- Girl gestures sternly at a sign over a workbench. No fart jokes. Oh, come on! It's the smell of the wisp! No! Well, I don't know what to say then. If you're willing to help instead of making puerile goofs, I could use the sample to analyze. Okay, I'll go find the smell of the wisp. 
Hey, great, thank you. Here, take this. We should help you track it down. You got nose trumpet. Big cone designed to make it so people who have lost their sense of smell can still tell what they've stepped in. I just smell through this? Yeah, just follow your nose. Alrighty then. This kid has a ball cap with a sinister looking triangle on it, and it's messing around with an elaborate homemade radio. Hi there. Say, hi, say you're a grown up. Can you help me with something? I'm not buying you any cigarettes. No, no. There's a swamp lady named Barbara Yargara. Everybody says she's just a fairy tale, but I know she's real because I've seen her hut right here in the swamp. But I don't know if she's the sort of swamp lady who eats kids or not. Swamp lady? Well, I don't want to call her a swamp witch or a swamp hag or something like that. I'd be mean to judge her that way without even having met her. Ah, sheesh. Kids these days. Alright, I'll check her out for you. Great, thanks. I'll mark her hut on your sponge? Map? Anyways, bring back a feather to prove you met her, okay? She has feathers? I mean from one of her pet birds. Sorry say she has a ton of them. How will you know it's just it isn't an ordinary feather I found somewhere? Well, you seem like a trustworthy person. And why do you need me to bring proof at all? Because that's how quests work, come on! Wait, you didn't mention the radio. What's the radio for? Hmm? Oh, this isn't related to Barbara Yarker or anything. I'm just trying to find a station where you can get some music in here. The reception in this swamp is terrible though. I see. Nice hat, what does a triangle mean? Thanks, it's one, these are great pyramids. One of them anyway. Ever seen them? Only on your hat, not personally. Maybe you will someday. Sure, who knows. Any chance you can get WGCR on that radio? Can't seem to get any station right now, sorry. Okay, I was just curious. This kid is peering at a terrarium filled with flies and occasionally tapping on the glass. Hey there, are you uh, into flies? Well, kinda. They're interesting once you get over the gross factor. I'm mostly just studying these people, because what I'm really interested is in the fly man. The fly man? Yeah, or maybe the man fly. I haven't decided which way is better yet. So what is the fly man and or man fly? The scientists have moved into the old Flemberg place. I did a little spying on him and I think he's trying to turn himself into a giant fly. How would anyone do that? I don't know, that's what's so interesting about him. Huh. She looks at her feet and blushes a little. Um, also, he's really handsome. For now, you mean? Well, yeah, I don't really like to meet him, but I'm too shy. Can you help me out? Sure, I'll help. Oh, thank you, thank you! Oh, here, I'll show you where the house is. The old Flemberg place. If you meet him, could you, um, bring me back a souvenir? Like, what? Maybe, um, one of his chest hairs? That's a little weird, but okay. This kid is messing around with some kind of weird mechanical contraption. What's this thing you're making? I really don't know yet. I'm just kind of messing around with it because I'm taking a break from my main project. Hey, you hear anything about the chupa, chupa naranja? I try to avoid spicy food. It gives me hiccups. No, this is a kind of monster that eats oranges. They're supposed to be from way down south, but I know there's one in this swamp somewhere. Unfortunately, no matter what kind of trap I build, it keeps escaping. You want to try? Sure, why not? Great! Feel free to use my workbench over there. I got plenty of spare parts and stuff. If you manage to catch it, bring me back one of his nostrils as proof, okay? A nostril? Not the whole head or pelt? Oh no, I don't want to kill it. I just want to prove that it's out there. Okay then. The workbench covered with tools and oranges. Well, the trooper and orange trap. You can have some scrap metal from the bench and construct a ba very basic animal trap. Would you like to make any refinements? Adjust the torque. You grab a screwdriver and carefully adjust the torque. Tighten the spring. You grab a wrench and tighten the trap's main spring. Tweak the sensitivity. You grab a pair of needle nose pliers and carefully adjust the sensitivity of the trigger. All right, let's go all out. Add a battery. You connect the battery to a couple of random spots on the trap. That should sure accomplish something. Add a fuse. You hook up a fuse just in case. You carefully pick up the trap and carelessly shove it into your sack. You got Chupananja. Chupa Naranja trap. Let's go hunting. Well, let's go to a barber's hut. That's odd. A patch of muddy ground has a lot of tracks and it looks like human handprints. Well, except for the fact that humans don't normally walk around on their hands. Maybe there was an acrobat convention in the middle of a swamp. Oh, what was that thing that one kid was talking about? The honey ape? Hmm, maybe there's something to that after all. Jeez, the more you look, the more confusing trampled mess of these tracks are. Seems like there's different sets of tracks heading in different directions. How many thumbs did he say this thing has again, on one hand? 
Okay, how many fingers was it? You follow the prince to a clearing in the middle of a small stand of trees, and you're surprised you find an animal pretty much like the honey ape the kid described, but somewhat larger than a chimpanzee or a very small gorilla, with disproportionately large and human-like hands. Sitting on the ground, carefully drinking out of a beehive, it doesn't seem to have noticed you yet. Sneak up on it. You successfully creep up on an unsuspecting primate, but you run out of trees to brush and hide behind before you get close enough to really do anything. Outsmart it! You pick up a rock and chuck it into an underbrush on the other side of the clearing. The honey ape stiffens at the noise and starts scanning for predators in that direction. Grab it! You leap on the small primate and wrestle to the ground, screeching loudly. I mean, the primate is screeching. No, l let's be fair, you both are. Once you get it pinned, you grab it by the wrist and yank off one of its long, untrimmed fingernails, which, thinking about it, is making me wince, and I've written some pretty horrible stuff in this game alone. <laughs> you got honey ink fingernail. Totally normal sized fingernail. Marvel at it. With that horrible deed accomplished, you let the creature loose and run screaming into the swamp. Congratulations on successfully stalking, outsmarting, and assaulting a small, weird ape. Thanks. This isn't a, so much a bird bath as a bird dirt here. This cat tail looks different from most of the others. Wow, oh, Typha Panthera! We extract the powerful chemicals from the plant's majestic fringe. Hold on. Oh, I need more hobo code knowledge. How much knowledge do I have? Fifteen. Okay, I might have to go back to the Ocean City. Huh, there's an old gravestone here. Pepperidge Dolphin. What the heck? Pepperidge Dolphin died 150 years ago? And was that man in the boxcar? G -g -g Hello again? Gah! Oh, did I startle you? Dreadfully sorry. Pepperidge, you're alive! Well, yes, was that in question? The gravestone says, Ah, oh, I see. No, no, this is my great-grandfather's. I was named after him. I decided to bring it with me as another souvenir in addition to my father's padlock collection. Ah, oh, well, that makes uh, sense. Pepperidge Dolphin. Looks like he's still adjusting to the orthogonal life. How's it going, Pepperidge? Quite well. It's a very nice little community they got here. A marvelous first step on my new path as a world traveler. Nice, hope that goes well for you. I'm quite certain that my travel will be completely free of danger or violent misfortune. Let me ask you something. You know any hobo code? I have learned some since my arrival, yes. At least I can do after the help you've given me. Here, I'll write it down. He writes something down on this piece of scrap paper and hands it to you. Hmm. I don't really understand this one. He takes a paper, rotates it about 30 degrees, and hands it back. Ah, I got it.
You see her pass off in the distance, heading up to the road towards you. It must be time to give them the Mobius ring. Jeez, it's a good ring though. It seems a shame to have it give it have to give it up. Easy come, easy go. Looking for it in your bag, but you can't find it. But you notice that you're wearing it in your offhand. You try, you try to take it off. Boy, that try is real ominous, huh? Doesn't budge. Experimentally, you swap it onto your main ring finger, and that works. When you swap your current ring back, the Mobius ring ends up back on your other hand. Uh oh. Is this thing cursed? The other, set, the other you said you shouldn't use it, and you'd find out why if you did. Being unable to give up a good ring doesn't seem like much of a curse, though. Wait, how did they give you the ring? You must have figured out a way to break the curse. Something about someone named Chester at Delphine Farm? There aren't any farms around you, though. It must be something you'll find out about later. In the meantime, you better make yourself scared before the other you sees you. Hmm. So, not yet. Back to the hut. Distant frog sounds become less distant frog sounds and you find yourself very close to a lot of frogs. Translate it. Ask this gal for a treat. Ooh. You cautiously enter the spooky hut and discover it's actually really nice inside. A young one with a rather twig-oriented hat greets you. Oh, hello! Please come in. I don't get many visitors apart from the birds. I might be in the wrong place. Are you Barbara Yargara? That's correct, and you are? I'm Slime Green. Pleasure! Come in, come in! This is a really nice house, honest. To be honest, I was expecting ever to be a lot more, you know, witchy. Oh, you heard the old stories. <laughs> Those are about my granny. She was really into croning. Croning? Being a crone! You know, all the really old traditional magic stuff. She used to be nearly 200 years old. She passed, she let me this house, and all her birds and so on. I see. Is that why you're here? Chasing the old legends of Barbara Yargara? Well, not exactly. I met a kid who's into old stories, but he was afraid you might be the child that he kind of wished, so he sent me instead. <laughs> oh, that's adorable! I don't think I've ever eaten the child, but there was no telling what was in Granny Stews. I'm not sure that was meant as a joke or... Sure! Anyway, I'm supposed to take back a feather to prove that I met you? Hmm, okay, I can't just give you one, though. Are you sure? Yeah, sorry, I have to give you some kind of test for this traditional thing. What sort of test? Well, it's a lot of work keeping this room clean with the birds and all. I'm getting behind on all my other chores. Uh, chores. Or you could fight me. Fight you? Granny trained all these birds to be killers, but I haven't exactly been out looking for trouble like she used to, so they could use some exercise, you know? Can I have a little treat? Oh, sure, dear. You got breath mint. This breath mint was stuffed in the bottom of a person in 1880 only recently rediscovered. Tell me more about those chores. I need you to muck out the bird bath out front and pick the right cattails out of my cattail patch for me. There are only two things. Isn't there a third thing? Of course, but I'll tell you about that after you finish the first two. Okay, I'll do the chores. Great! You can tell the right cattails by having to look a little different. And I'm sure you saw the bird bath when you came in. Huh, never seen an indoor bird bath before. Oh, that was a gift. It's too small for my birds, though. I'd be happy to give it to you along with my feather. That feather, if you help me out? Hmm, okay. Probably shouldn't mess with Trapdoor without Barbara's permission. And probably all her bird's permission, too. Chestnut is nothing but rooks on one side, nothing but doves on the other. This isn't much as a bird bath, has a bird dirt here. Six season sun charmer. Hmm. Oh, we got this perfume wedding veil for Stench Armor. And for Sleaze, we got this Crystal Heart Necklace. Wait, does that not do it? Dang it. We need more Stench Armor. Oh, right, because it's an accessory that occupies the same slot, unfortunately. Bowery, bowery cloche. Much better. Muck it out. You slop the filth out of the bird path and hide it behind a tree where no one can see it. I'm 
The one for my accessory, I forgot. Alright, I hit a mysticality. Hmm. Cattail is right, which I suppose it means it's suitable for whatever purpose Barbara uses them for. How are those chores going? I finished, here's your cattails. Great, thanks. What's the mysterious third task? Go down to the basement and fetch a sack of bird seed for me. Basement? How do you have a basement in a swamp? It's weird, I know. I think Granny's magic keeps, in keeps it from collapsing. It uh, makes it kind of scary down here. You have a flashlight, right? Yes, I have a flashlight. The fuse box is broken beyond repair. You have no choice but to dwell in the darkness. Wow, Barbara wasn't kidding about being uncomfortably dark down here. Spooky armor time. Go deeper. How long is this basement? You're pretty sure you would have reached the back wall by now. Makes sense why she keeps using in the basement. The scariest thing about this is the kerning. You don't particularly want to know what this puddle consists of. Jeez, that's a lot of rats. Are they whispering, get out? You can hear that, right? It's not just me? Oh good, the wall is bleeding here. The ground around you starts to shake and bits of dirt after falling from the ceiling. The rumbling nose almost sounds like someone growling, Your soul is mine! It seems like bad news. Let's get a creepy locket. These must be original Barbara Yagara's magic books. Unfortunately, it's dark as the inside of a dog down here. The ground is shaking more violently, furiously even. The walls howl. Die, you fool, at you as rocks falling from the ceiling threaten to bury you alive. Finally, get the seed and out of here. You got an item, bag of bird seed. Ha ha ha, you should plant this if you want to grow a field of birds. Ho ho ho. Oh, that was weird. Hello, how are those chores going? You just sack a bird seed. You uh, kind of undersold how scary it is down there. Sorry about that. Maybe I can learn to keep a maybe I can learn trying to keep the mice away. And the voices and the bleeding walls. Hmm, doesn't sound familiar. Maybe your flashlight was acting up? Anyway, thanks. Here's that feather I promised. We got Barbara Yarker a feather. Feather from one of Barbara Yar Barbara's birth, not Barbara herself. Thanks. You said I could have this little bird bath? Sure, take it with my blessing. It's a, not a literal blessing. I don't know how to do those yet. Should really should have dumped the water out before you started carrying it around. Clean now, never let's never speak of it again. You're browsing through your way through a swamp, taking a sniff through your nose, trumpet, and now then. This swamp smells terrible. I mean, the swamp is literally just a standing water and rotting compost to biome, so it's not like that's news or anything. You wouldn't be surprised if this swamp is at least nominated for a world's worst smelling swamp. Oh god in heaven, what is that? It smells like a rotten egg made it with the tire fire, and the egg the tire fire laid also went rotten. Squinting through the tears, you see a patch of brown air hovering nearby. That must be the smell of the wisp that kid was looking for. Alright, well, let's, let's stack up some stench armor. Do a little wandering.
The spot of color in this draft swamp catches your eye, and you find a pile of withered orange husks in front of a shallow cave. This must be near the Chupra Naranja. Unfortunately, it isn't home right now, or maybe since you aren't an orange, it would be, wouldn't be dangerous to you anyway? That almost certainly isn't true. Set your trap. You set your trap and hide behind a nearby bush to wait for your prey. After a while, you start to get very bored. Remember that people who hunt for traps don't typically sit and wait for the prey to show up. Instead, they leave and come back later. That's the whole kind of point of animal traps. You catch a whiff of the burnt rubber and see a column of smoke drifting to the sky nearby. As you get close to the site, you see a s that a small airplane has crashed into the mud, or perhaps splattered or glorped into the mud. Despite anything the map might have to say about it, you wander to back. You manage to wander back to the spot where you set that trap for the Chupra Narancha. Peering through the bushes, you discover your trap has been trapped, indeed trapped something. So it looks like a giant toad with a tentacle face covered in boils that also might be eyes. You have no idea what a Chupra Narancha looks like, but this is about as seeming like as anything you were imagining. The presumed per Chupra Narancha seems pretty annoyed by being caught in your trap. You carefully sneak up on the Chupra Narancha, since it's both distracted by the trap and also unable to turn around. You manage to take it completely unawares. It struggles futilely as you grab it in the headlock and slice off one of its nostrils. The creature roars in pain and hung anger. By the time it manages to thrash its way out of the trap, you are already completely the heck out of here. Ring of flesh, perfectly crafted by the natural selection to seek out the mightiest of oranges. Guys, there's swamp gas syrups nearby without sound than a brownish yellow cloud. I won't bother trying to describe the smell, I'm sure you can imagine it for yourself. A large swarm of stink bugs quickly arrive and start zooming around inside the gas clouds. It's unclear if they're attracted by the smell or if they're refilling their stink bags or what. When that cloud dissipates, you're probably going to have a lot of unwanted attention. Stink bugs aren't paying you any mind just yet, so it's simple and it's just leave. Unfortunately, in the process, you get upon by the another geyser. Ugh. Ah, here it is. Run up and grab it. Holding both of your nose and your breath, you run up and snatch the wisp before it can fly away, collecting a clump of air so foul it sticks to your hand. Fortunately, you got an empty jar you can scrape it off into. You got Stinky Esther. All the items on the table are either made of or covered in moss. Ooh, this truck is covered with eastern twinkly mana moss. Please. Well, if this isn't the moss mana kid was talking about, you got a real unusual coincidence here. It doesn't exactly look fearsome, but if you're looking for a fight, it might be best to take advantage of surprise. Talk to him. Uh, excuse me, are you a moss man? Yep, that's me. Clyde Moss Man, pleased to meet ya. Hi, I'm Slime Green. Welcome to my humble abode. I haven't I ain't get many visitors. Well, except some weird kid I sometimes see peeking around the trees. Are you actually Moss Man? I ain't quite get what you're meaning. That's my nasty name, like I said. Yeah, but are you a human person or sort of a moss swamp creature? I guess this is a strange and impossibly rude question. Well, I weren't always this way, but I've been living in this swamp a long time and I just kinda dug in and got comfortable. The moss just kinda sorta grows out of me natural like now instead of hair. Since it happened so gradual and I got so accustomed to it, didn't occur to me to question it. Oop, sorry, didn't mean to give you some kind of philosophical crisis. No apology necessary, friend, but it is something I'm gonna have to be chewing on for a while. Can I, uh, pass on your boss? Excuse me? You dropped an existential bombshell on me and now you're asking for part of my body? Not really in top social form today, I guess. I do need some of that moss, though. Hmm. Tell you what, help me solve this puzzle of whatever I'm a man or a monster and I'll give you some moss. Hmm. Well, let me have a look at this moss. Oh yeah, this is Spagnum Destiosi. What's that? What's that when it's at home? It's sort of the moss version of a fungal parasite. It grows on animals that don't move around much, like sloths and steals the energy and nutrients that would otherwise be used to make hair. Basically harmless. Well, that's a relief. If you ever feel a strong urge to get yourself eaten by wolves though, I'd recommend trying to ignore that. Gotcha. So this means I'm a regular human? Well, yeah. With an asterisk next to regular, maybe, but yeah. That's a relief. Let me give you some of this moss, like I promised. He also have a part of his mustache and hands it to you. You got Moss Man's mustache. Lip-shaped slab of moss. Thanks. Hey, are you a hobo? 
<laughs> Only the thing about hobos, they're always on the move. I feel like I'm practically the opposite of a hobo. I happen to know a group of hobos that settled down and built themselves a pretty nice camp. I bet you'd be welcome there if you're interested. Well, now, I do value my soul too, but I certainly couldn't do any harm to business C. In fact, I do believe I'm due for a vacation. <laughs> you mark the location of the hobo camp on Clyde's map, and he heads off into a swamp with a wave. All right, what else we got? Flemberg. Shotgun toting gator hunt a hollow city from you. You again, I told you to get. Didn't I give you enough money for the bus? Well, here. The mailbox has Flemberg on the side. Rifle through it. You casually commit a federal crime. This gas generator is providing power to the barn in exchange for pastoral ambience. Ooh, a fence. Another one of these cursed picket fences. Bigger to be cursed. Will Hunter's the one who's cursed. Looking pretty spick and span. One fence left to make Will Hunter a real boy again. Some viscous goo has rendered this house entirely decorative. Like Flemberg's a fan of crates and barrels. Glass case with two giant horrible flies in it. Crazy controls for this crazy contraption. Probably just wouldn't shouldn't mess around with it until you talk to that guy inside the machine. Venture willing tools and supplies. The shop contains a lot of things that you don't know what they are or what they do. Next to workbench, there's a pile of much smaller workbenches. There's so many, surely he wouldn't mind. Flemberg must have been working on miniaturization technology before you developed his weird fly obsession. Hey, how's it going? Very small man inside the machine is trying, clearly trying to get your attention. Uh, hi, I'm Slime. Do you need help? I absolutely need help. Thank you. My name's Flemberg. Paul Flemberg. I went back into my parents' old house because nobody would give me lapsing for my experiments. Not an assistant would also have been nice to have. What are you trying to do? Prove myself. But you know, better, faster, stronger, at least one of those. I went the wrong settings on the control console, and all that happened was that I shrank. You can't just change the settings, or does it open from the inside? But, yeah, yeah, I didn't think it through. Okay, well, can I? I can just let you. No! No, no, no! Opening the door with the polarizer boot, and it takes months for the field to minutes to recharge. Not to mention the fact that I have to collect all new supplies of genetic material. The door can only be opened once. Jeez, you really didn't think this through. What should I do then? You have to fix the settings on the console! What should I set to? Clearly, if I knew that, I wouldn't have put in the wrong ones in myself. Just make it better before you open the door. Better than what? Better than a normal guy. I don't know. I spent so long thinking about how I could build this machine. I didn't have any time left to think about why I built it. I'll see what I can do. Mess with them. Let's see. You got... Fly and Flemberg. Huh. Looks to be 100% Flemberg at this point. Bring a nice hat. Okay, well, this is just like the normal me. Like, before I even got near, this is exactly what I do not want. Oh, right. You told me that. Are you sure you don't want to be a regular person? Seems to work from fine from just for most of us. I'm positive. Change me. Improve me. Okay, so pituitary is what makes it small. Lumberg fast his mouth a few times, but he didn't seem to be able to speak. The way he's breathing seems pretty uncomfortable, too. Lumberg's now a giant fly with a human head. Oh god, one sec, I'll try again. No, wait, this one's pretty great, actually. What? I can fly? I have the proportion and strength of a fly scaled up to a human size. What's not to love? Buzz, buzz. Is this anger? Are you trying to express anger right now? Buzz, buzz. Of 
Horrible fly headed man is buzzing loudly and repeatedly punching the glass. He's wearing a nice hat. Clawing violently at the window and buzzing angrily. Fortunately, the unbreakable glass was the one thing he did think through. Much about this. Will the giant fly consider humans to be prey? That doesn't really answer my question. I think it's just a regular fly in there. <laughs> I'll give you a fancy hat. You're sure you're like this? Having a huge fly body? Wouldn't you? I don't understand your rejection. I guess. We let Flemberg out of the booth. Heck yeah! I can't wait to get all kinds of giant fly stuff. Before you go, I need to get a chest hair off of you. Do I still have those? Okay, well, whatever. Sure. Thanks, it's for... I probably just don't want to know. I'm out. See you. Okay, bye. Hmm. Hmm. That was weird. Ow. You lost. Gee, that really takes you off. How those ticks off to you. Take a moment to consider your failure. Contemplative. Think about that fight you lost, how much that sucked. Now you don't want to lose any more fights. We need more health. There we go. More health. The boss man you were talking about. See, I told you he's real. Yeah, he's a pretty decent guy, actually. He gave me his mustache. Here. My gosh, that's amazing. Thank you. You're welcome. Kid happily sticks the mustache to his upper lip. And right, look. Mossy, this is the best day of my life. Kid pulls out a sash with pins a badge on it and hands it to you. As thanks, here's an official Monster Squad sash and your first Monster Squad badge. You got Monster Club sash. Huh. Neat. How's that mustache working out for you, kid? Love it. It's really swell. Well, once it grows anymore, you have to get your dad to teach you how to grow it properly. Turn out you're right. The honey egg was a totally real thing. My gosh, really? I knew it! And try here's your tracing back and that fingernail you wanted. Wow, huh. Nothing wrong? I guess I'm kind of torn between excitement and vindication, and the fact that I realized this is a much grislier object than I realized it was going to be. Oh, don't worry about it. The honey egg will be fine. It had nine more. I guess that's true. Anyway, thanks for your help. Here's another Monster Squad batch. Enjoying that fingernail? Oh, it's not about the fingernail itself. It's more about the good feelings that come from knowing that you were right all along and everyone doubt who doubted you was a fool. I see. Enjoying that? Oh, yes. Very much so. Hi, right, did you find a smell of the wisp? I sure did. Please don't open the jar while I'm in the room. That bad, huh? What if it's gotten stronger since I met it? Well, anyway, thank you for your help. You hand over the nose trumpet she lent you for the jar the foul she collected. Kid takes your sash, pins another badge on it, and hands it back to you. Hey, good luck any good luck getting a feather from Barbara Yagra? I mean, one of her birds, right? Yeah, yeah, she doesn't have feathers herself. We established that. Good, good. Just checking. Here you go. Just checking. Here you go. Wow, thanks a lot. What was she like? She's pretty nice, actually. Don't go in the basement, though. The kid takes your sash, pins another badge to it, and hands it back to you. You got Monster Club sash. Did you meet the fly man? Did you get... Um, yeah, I got it here. Oh, thank you so much! I'm gonna put it in this little silver locket and treasure it forever! What was he like? Was his experiment a success? 
I've got to go. Join the feather? Yeah, it's real neat. Still trying to work up the courage to go visit her myself, though. Just take a couple of other kids with you? Eh, nah. None of us really share any interest in except the broadly categorical sense. How's your smell the wisp research going? Well, every time I try to smell the sample, my eyes water so bad I can't see any of my instruments. And one of my probes melted. It's really exciting! Can I use your equipment to make some potion? Sure, just don't serve any of my smells. The girl is gazing into her terrarium dreamily, dreamishly. Do you think it's okay for a woman in a giant flag? Oh. Well, at least it was a success that worked for her. Kid is messing around with some kind of weird mechanical contraption. Hey, caught that trooper Naranja you were after. It looked pretty fierce, but the trap did the job. Wow, that's great! Now we'll have real proof why there aren't any oranges in the swamp. Uh, sure. Anyway, here's its nostril. Neat. I'll wear it as a ring. Okay. Anyway, don't go near that part of the swamp for a while. It was real mad. You got Monster Club Sash. Yay! One of each stat and one additional combat item and five to extra HP and plus 20 to... Then the meat drops. That's an amazing accessory. I will take it. Definitely worth. How's the trap making going? I think I'm done with traps for now. I'm working on inventing the electric razor. Are you even old enough to shave? No, but that just means I got plenty of time. You can't unlock. Boris will close your sash and nods approvingly. You can now pet Boris to receive a boon. What do we got? Spooky armor. Hmm. I think I'll keep my current one. Uh, I think we'll leave these for next time. Now let's go back to Hobo Camp. There's a moss pan. Hey, there he is. Hey, Slime, right? Thanks for pointing out to this place. Pretty great. Everyone's real friendly-like. Nice. So you weren't missing the solitude of the swamp? Nope. Turns out it's less important to me than just being able to sit still and not do much. Been helping out by growing herbs for the kitchen here. You know any hobo code you could teach me? Sure, I picked up a couple of signs. Here's one for keep off the grass. You sat at the bird bath Barbara Yarger gave you. Edison happily flies over to him and starts splashing around. You set up Flember's tiny workbench up on your desk. Time to get to tiny work. Ooh. Edison's frolicking happily in the bird bath. Aww. Thank you. 